uh, yes, sorry. Yes, we'd like to thank on behalf of uh, CYS for his support and the good cooperation with our organization. So today, honorary speakers uh, of the event are Mr. Peter Dusen, technical ex expert at the International Committee for Standardization, uh, <clears throat> Subcommittee 42 on Artificial Intelligence, and Mr. Kostandinos uh, Trutos, is head of the delegation of national representative to the International and the European Committee for Standardization in Artificial Intelligence. So dear Mr. Dusen and Mr. Schutters, welcome and thank you for accepting our request to be our guest speakers for today. We are sure that you will be give us valuable information about the existing situation relating to the international standards for AI and the European standardization regarding AI regulation. So finally, I would like to thank you for your presence at today's online uh, event. So at this point, I invite Mr. Pambos Kamas, Director of the Cyprus Organization for Standardization, for a short uh, meeting. Uh, Mr. Kamas, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stefane. Good morning, everybody. Dear presidents and chairmen of technology associations here in Cyprus, dear speakers, dear participants, today's seminar is part of the important work that CYS uh, is doing for the promotion of European and international standards in the field of um, information and communication technologies. Emerging technologies like artificial intelligence are important tools in the framework of the digital single market strategy for achieving an open interoperable cooperation between the public and private sector. Artificial intelligence technology is developing across the globe at a rapid pace and Europe is developing and strengthening its own position and role within this environment by initiating future regulations on artificial intelligence and harmonized standards that will support those regulations. CYS, through its national standardization system, is supporting the developing of Europe. For artificial intelligence, it's already established, engaging a number of national experts who contribute in the drafting and public commenting of European and international standards. In addition, I would personally like to thank our national representatives in European and international technical committees for artificial intelligence, who devote valuable resources, knowledge, time, money, in order to support the national interests on the subject and contribute together with all the other experts in the standardization deliverables globally. On behalf of CYS, allow me to express my appreciation to today's distinguished speakers, Mr. Costandinos Churtos and Mr. Peter Ndusen for accepting our invitation to share their valuable knowledge and expertise with us today on artificial intelligence. We owe a great thank to our supporters for today's event, the Cyprus Computer Society, the Association of Telecommunication Companies, CEDA and NetU for their continuous support in our mission. A big thanks to all my colleagues at CYS for organizing this event and provide the opportunity to spread standardization messages to you. I wish you all a fruitful and productive seminar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas, for your welcoming uh, speech. So now I kindly invite Mr. Kostas Avrodis, Chairman of Cyprus Computer Society, for his uh, welcome uh, speech. Mr. Avrodis. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I apologize that uh, my uh, speech will be in Greek, so I will uh, I will switch to Greek. It's not a long uh, speech, so it will be good for everybody. 
So, αγαπητοί φίλοι, καλημέρα σα. Είναι με ιδιαίτερη χαρά που αποδέχτηκα την ευγενή πρόσκληση του Κυπριακού Οργανισμού Τυποποίηση να απευθύνω χαιρετισμό εκ μέρου του Διοικητικού Συμβουλίου στο σημερινό συνέδριο με θέμα των ρόλων των προτύπων στον τομέα του Artificial Intelligence. Για εκείνου που δεν με γνωρίζουν, είμαι ο Κώστας Αγρότη και είμαι πρόεδρο του Κυπριακού Συνδέσμου Πληροφορική, ενό συνδέσμου που σήμερα έχει πάνω από 800 μέλη επιστήμονε τη πληροφορική. Ο Κυπριακό Σύνδεσμο Πληροφορική είναι επιστημονικό και επαγγελματικό σύνδεσμο μη κερδοσκοπικού χαρακτήρα που εκπροσωπεί του επαγγελματίε πληροφορική και επικοινωνιών στην Κύπρο. Όρασμα του συνδέσμου μα είναι όπω καταστεί ο ηγετικό ανεξάρτητο φορέα προαγωγή, ανάπτυξη και εφαρμογή τη κοινωνία, τη πληροφορία και τη γνώση προ όφελο τη Κυπριακή κοινωνία και των μελών του. Κύριο μέρο του συνδέσμου μα και η σκοπή του είναι η προαγωγή τη επιστήμη τη Πληροφορική και συναφών θεμάτων, η ενημέρωση και η ευαισθητοποίηση των πολιτών στον τομέα τη πληροφορική, η συνεισφορά σε θέματα που αφορούν την ανάπτυξη, έρευνα και παιδεία στον τομέα τη πληροφορική, η εκπροσώπηση των επιστημόνων τη πληροφορική στην Κύπρο και η πρόθεση των καλώ νοουμένων συμφερόντων του, η πρόθεση, εισαγωγή και αποδοχή κώδικα επαγγελματική διοντολογία για του επαγγελματίε τη πληροφορική. Η πρόθεση και υποστήριξη τη δημιουργία προτύπων για την πληροφορική, η παροχή των συμπολιτευτικών υπηρεσιών στην κυβέρνηση σε θέματα σχετικά με την πληροφορική, η συνεργασία με άλλα επαγγελματικά σώματα τόσο στην Κύπρο όσο και στο εξωτερικό για θέματα σχετικά με την πληροφορική, η πρόθεση για υποβολή συζητήσεων και πραγματοποίηση παραστάσεων προ τι κυβερνητικέ αρχέ και όλα τα αρμόδια σώματα περιλαμβανομένων πολιτικών κομμάτων, την διανομοθεσία κατοχήρωση του επαγγέλματο των εργαζομένων στον τομέα τη πληροφορική. Η έκδοση και η κυκλοφορία ενημερωτικών περιοδικών ή άλλων εντύπων, καθώ και η διοργάνωση σεμιναρίων και διαλέξεων σε θέματα πληροφορική. Είναι μέσα σε αυτά τα πλαίσια που ο Κυπριακό Σύνδεδο Πληροφορική υποστηρίζει τη σημερινή μερίδα που διοργανώνει ο Κυπριακό Οργανισμό Τυποποίηση σε ένα πολύ ενδιαφέρον και επίκαιρο θέμα, αυτό του ρόλου των προτύπων στην τεχνητή νοημοσύνη. Συγχαίρω τον Οργανισμό Τυποποίηση για την πρωτοβουλία αυτή και εύχομαι σε όλου καλή συνέχεια. Ευχαριστώ. Many thanks to Mr. Rodis for his so welcome uh, notice, notices. Uh, we begin with a very short presentation uh, regarding some important information for CYS and uh, ICT standardization. Um, Mr. Uh, Joseph Caris, uh, the floor is yours. Can you see my presentation? <clears throat> Hello? Yes. Yes. Yes, Joseph. Is it, when you is it full screen or? No, 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 it's not full screen. You can take it. Full not full. Uh, one moment. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Uh, good morning from me. Um, uh, today I will uh, make a very short presentation uh, to describe um, and to give you some information about uh, Cyprus uh, organization for standardization. And uh, I will give you a very brief uh, introduction on the standardization on the globe, um, and, but uh, more information, um, I will, uh, uh, the next speakers will, uh, will describe in more detail, of course. Um, so uh, let me start with saying that um, uh, Cyprus Organization for Standardization um, is, um, uh, is acting under a private law with the only shareholder, the Ministry of Finance. Um, this is our um, uh, structure uh, in, uh, in CYS. Uh, we have our, our board of directors um, and uh, we are divided into um, uh, six uh, uh, sectors. 
and uh, every sector is promoting uh, national, European, and international standards uh, in the public and um, uh, private sector. Um, of course, AI standards are promoted through uh, my sector and my colleague Stefanos, which, which we are responsible for the sector of uh, information communication technologies. Uh, CYS uh, is a member of the three European uh, standardization bodies, and we are also members of the three international uh, uh, standardization bodies. On the European um, uh, map, we have uh, SEM, Senelec, and Etsy. These organizations, they are uh, uh, basically developing um, uh, uh, standards for uh, all emerging technologies. And uh, there is much interest uh, nowadays for, of course, for artificial intelligence. Uh, the same goes for uh, the International Standards Organization, ISO, IEC, and ITU. And later on, my next slides, you will see, I will describe uh, the work uh, they done uh, in briefly, uh, in briefly words. Uh, the main activities of CYS, we are uh, managing the national standardization system in Cyprus. We are uh, organizing informative uh, uh, lectures uh, and training seminars. We do visits in the industry and uh, we are uh, writing publication and articles in, uh, in mass media and, uh, and social media. Uh, how do we manage the standardization system in uh, Cyprus? Um, on the on the left uh, on the left side, you can see national technical committees, uh, which are uh, committees who are, who, who are dealing with the developing of uh, of national standards when there is a request. Uh, most of the times, from uh, professional associations. Um, we have uh, technical experts that they are participating actively uh, in, the, um, in the European International Committees. Uh, we have observers, which uh, basically they are uh, observing um, the standardization work of, uh, of European International Committees, uh, most of the times electronically and not by um, participating actually in the committees. Um, we have uh, on the right side, we have the National Mirror, Mirror Committees, which I'm going to explain on the next slide, which uh, basically uh, the National Mirror Committees are, um, their role is to, uh, uh, is to include uh, experts from the public uh, and the private sector uh, from all um, uh, from all sectors and from all associations and uh, uh, academias and ministries and uh, related departments relating to, to the field of the National Mirror Committee. Uh, and their role is to uh, the experts which are contributing in the uh, National Mirror Committees. Um, their role is to uh, uh, be notified about the draft um, uh, European and international standards and uh, uh, comment on the draft standards, which uh, uh, will be the national position at the end of the day and will impact the final publication of the standard. So as you can see on this slide, um, a standard which needs uh, to and or two and a half years in order to be uh, developed. There is a stage in the, um, in the middle of the life cycle, which is called public inquiry. And, uh, and at this stage, uh, the National Mirror Committees uh, have their responsibility with the experts inside uh, to comment on the standard and to uh, also uh, contribute on the final uh, on the final vote of the standard before it is published. Uh, under uh, Cyprus Organization for Standardization, uh, we have uh, also national mirror committees uh, on several uh, subjects. One of these subjects is, of course, the artificial intelligence, and uh, everyone from you uh, can contact uh, CYS 
and uh, be part of this National Mirror Committee. And uh, I must say that uh, the members of the National Mirror Committee, they are updated for the draft standards of the ISO Committee, SC42, as well uh, the European uh, Standardization Committee, SENSEN-ELEC JTC21. Uh, we have also many experts that uh, they are uh, participating in the European International um, uh, Committees regarding uh, many subjects of, uh, of emerging technologies. We have also experts uh, that they are participating uh, in the ISO Committee for uh, Artificial Intelligence as well um, at the European Committee, Sensen Elect JTC 21. Um, the next speaker, of course, uh, Mr. Kostandinos Churtos, which is uh, our national representative in these two committees, will elaborate more of the, of the scope and the role of, uh, of these committees. Um, so uh, the standardization at the European, uh, at the European map, um, for regarding AI uh, has to take care a lot of uh, related uh, um, legislations and directives. Uh, some of them are uh, are on this slide. Uh, most um, important regulations are like uh, GDPR, uh, NIS directive, uh, products and safety and directive, machinery directive. But uh, also the um, AI uh, future regulation, uh, which is proposed by the European Commission. Um, AI is a very complex uh, subject, um, and uh, standardization has to uh, ha has to pass by a lot of uh, barriers uh, on the um, regarding AI. Uh, this is a framework that a framework that was developed by the uh, European standardization in order to tie up a little bit uh, the um, uh, subjects around AI. Uh, this is just a slide to show that um, the framework of AI, uh, which includes a set of tools and uh, methodologies um, for AI systems, which will support the test, the design, and the verification of uh, and the maintainability of AI systems. Um, of course, these uh, uh, these tools of AI um, will have to conform. Um, uh, a, 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 let's say a conformity assessment will have to be developed in order to have uh, at the end of the day trustworthy systems that uh, will execute uh, many solutions uh, in the industry. Uh, I will not, uh, this is uh, Sensen Elect JTC 21, uh, the European Committee. Uh, my colleague Kostandinos will give you some more information uh, about uh, this committee later on. Uh, as you know, AI will impact uh, many services uh, um, of the industry, so, uh, all these technical committees, which are under Sense and Elect, will be affected by AI. So we are uh, waiting for all of these committees uh, to cooperate with uh, the European Committee and Select JTC21 uh, regarding AI and their subjects, and their subjects which will be impacted at the end of the day from AI. Uh, this is ETSI, the European Telecom Telecommunication Standards Institute. Uh, they also formed a committee called uh, um, ETSI Industry Specification Group Security of AI, uh, ISG. Um, and this committee actually deals with the security aspects of AI. Uh, when um, um, and uh, it will deal with three aspects like uh, securing AI from an attack where AI is the component of the system, uh, mitigating against AI where AI is the problem actually. And uh, the third aspect of this committee will standardize when AI 
uh, is used to enhance security measures against an attack from other components. Uh, as well as in, uh, in Sense and Elec, uh, AI will affect uh, many, others, uh, many other sectors and technologies like uh, blockchain, like uh, uh, mobile technology, like electronic health, uh, and all these uh, sectors at the end of the day will have to standardize also uh, AI into their uh, uh, subjects. Uh, this is the ISO uh, IEC JTC1 SC42. Uh, our guest speaker today, Mr. Peter Duesen, will elaborate more on this uh, uh, international committee. Uh, we have also standardization in International Telecommunications Union. Um, here we have many focus groups, uh, which uh, um, they touch uh, many different uh, subjects uh, for AI. Uh, we have a focus group for uh, 5G networks and how AI affects uh, the future networks on uh, digital agriculture on uh, there is a focus group on ai for natural disaster management on autonomous networks on autonomous driving and also uh, ai for environmental efficiencies for e-health and for vehicular multimedia in these focus groups you can join also like uh, the rest of the committees that i described in my previous uh, uh, slides uh, and also ITU uh, created an AI uh, repository uh, in order to identify AI-related projects, which, uh, we will, which they will help them progress towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, so this is uh, a tool uh, that everybody is welcome to um, uh, uh, suggest uh, their projects and uh, 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 especially helped uh, with some use cases that they are used for uh, um, developing and progressing the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Uh, also, AI Watch uh, is a tool that it was created by the European uh, Commission. Uh, this is a tool that it was created because there are a lot of standardization committees from many organizations. Uh, so this tool is providing a, a survey uh, which uh, we will map uh, at the end of the day, the standardization and the initiatives uh, and the initiative work uh, dealing with AI. Um, it will analyze the relation uh, of the of the work that is already done um, to the existing requirements of the proposed uh, EU Artificial Intelligence Act, and um, also to assess if uh, the standards already exist, uh, they are suitable and uh, operationable um, uh, for the future regulation. And if there are any possible gaps, uh, this tool will suggest also uh, future uh, standards that they will have to be um, developed in the sector of AI. Uh, from, uh, as I said uh, earlier, uh, you can engage in uh, national uh, mirror committees, or uh, you can engage also in European and standardization committees. Uh, for every committee, um, uh, depends from which committee you are you want to deal with uh, and be engaged. Uh, for every organization, the responsibilities are different. So uh, if you are um, interested in engaging in uh, national, European, or international committees, just contact with Cyprus Organization for Standardization, and we explain you the process and the responsibilities for being engaged in, uh, in the previous, in the international, uh, national or European committees that you have interest in. So that's my end uh, of, my, of the presentation.
I would be happy to answer at the end of the day, uh, whatever questions you have, or you can put them uh, in the chat box and I will answer you directly. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Harris, for your presentation. So ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to uh, invite Mr. Kostandinos Churtos to present the AI regulation and European standardization. Mr. Churtos is a public policy and legal advisor specialized in technology law and policy. He spent most of uh, his career in the public policy and now uh, he's uh, in charge of his own uh, consulting field in the intersection of law and technology. Mr. Churtos is also an expert for the EU Agency for Cybersecurity, where he serves uh, a member in a number of experts committees supporting the EU policy implementation and speciality, uh, specifically the cybersecurity certification schemes. Finally, he uh, participates in the EU-US Trade and Technology Council Working Group for Technology Standards. So, Mr. Trutos, the floor is uh, yours. Thank you, Stefanos. Can you all hear me well? Yes, yes, of course. You do. Okay. I'm going to go into full presentation mode. Okay. Perfect. So, good morning, everybody. Nice to be here with you today. Um, so I'm going to go through a quick overview of the AI Act, the new European legal framework on artificial intelligence, which is, by the way, uh, the first um, artificial intelligence legal framework uh, ever built. Um, so uh, that's uh, quite an, a novelty on behalf of the EU, and it is quite a big project to be achieved. Um, we are going, I'm going to go through uh, the AI Act um, and then the relevant work standardization to support the AI Act on a very high level, uh, which allows me to finish into the 15 minutes time uh, framework that I have. Uh, so if you want to go deeper, some aspects um, that would be possible during the questions, uh, you know, the question time. So uh, I think that you already provided this introduction, Stefanos. Thank you so much. So no need on my behalf to provide it. So let's go directly to the presentation. Uh, so the, the AI Act was proposed by the European Commission uh, back in April of 2021. Uh, the proposed legal framework focuses mainly on the specific utilization of AI systems and associated risks. And it is basically a set of harmonized rules for the placing on the market of the AI systems, the putting into service and the use of artificial intelligence um, uh, systems. What the commission is proposing is to establish a technology neutral definition of AI systems and lay down uh, a classification for AI systems with different requirements and obligations tailored on a risk-based approach and a relevant intended uh, purpose. Some AI systems presenting uh, unacceptable risks would be prohibited. Um, uh, such, um, such systems would be, for example, uh, AI systems related to social scoring. Um, a wide range of high-risk um, systems would be um, authorized, but subject to a set of requirements and obligations uh, to get access to the EU market. And then there is uh, the lab final group of AI systems with limited risk that would be subject to a very, very light transparency um, obligations. Uh, in general, uh, the definition of the AI within the EU regulation uh, uh, should be as neutral as possible in order to cover techniques which are not yet known or uh, developed. Um, so it could, be, it could be technology neutral, but it should, it should also be time neutral. Uh, for what is to be de developed in the future. We do have this definition today in the proposal of the, of the AI regulation, but as it stands, the AI regulation is still being debated in the European Parliament, where we have almost 3,000 amendments tabled, uh, and it is being debated right now in the joint committee, uh, in a joint committee of the European Parliament. Uh, and until 
we have the first report um, published by the committee, we cannot be sure about uh, most of the wording or definitions included in the air regulation. However, um, the core of the air regulation included should remain by 80 to 90% stable. So we're going to rely on that. Uh, and, um, and we are going to present what was in the original proposal, hoping that most of these, uh, most of these elements will remain part of the final proposal um, uh, of the European Parliament to the European Commission for approval as a legislation. Um, here you can see an illustration of the, of the risks. Let me just, uh, um, use my laser pointer to so here you can see an illustration of the risks unacceptable risks means prohibited use uh for high risk as i told you it's mandatory applications and conformity assessment process and conformity assessment could mean two things it could mean self-assessment and it could also mean a third party conformity assessment um and then you have the limited risk which is subject to limited self obligations and then the minimal risk which is okay to be developed and used in the EU, but it will be monitored uh, by, um, by specific uh, institutions for market surveillance appointed by the EU and member states. Now about the conformity assessment, um, as I told you, the ones that are high risk, uh, they, are, they would need to either for conformity assessment before they can be placed on the market. And these are the two categories listed here, Annex 2 and Annex 3. Annex 2 is AI systems used as products or safety components of products covered by sectorial union law um, in areas such as transport and medical devices, radio equipment. And when you say radio equipment, that includes, do not be fooled, that includes uh, wireless IoT devices, such as even mobile phones or your TVs if, if it's connected to Wi Fi. And then safety equipment and machinery. And then we have an extreme, which is other high-risk AI applications, uh, including biometric identification, uh, management of critical infrastructure, education, employment, uh, or even justice. Uh, it should be reminded that uh, the regulation will apply uh, not only within the EU, so the requirements will apply not only within the EU, but it will also apply to providers and users that are established or located outside the EU territory and which place or put into service AI systems in the EU or the AI output produced by the systems used by the EU. Now, about, about what is it? I mean, uh, Joseph was very, very informative uh, earlier. And thank you so much, Joseph, because you provided a lot of background information uh, that I, would not, I wouldn't have to, to repeat here. Uh, Joseph told you earlier about the trustworthiness certification. This is how we call the certification uh, under the AI Act, the trustworthiness certification. There are different elements um, around the trustworthiness certifications, such as the use of high quality data sets for training and testing the system, uh, transparency obligation, robustness, accuracy in cybersecurity requirements, or the obligation for risk management systems to be used. So all of them together, these elements are connected to the specific high level requirements included in the AI regulation. And for all of these elements, um, standards need to, be, uh, need to be used in order to verify um, that they meet uh, the criteria included within uh, the high level requirements. Now, uh, a few more words about what, uh, what is a conformity assessment. And this is again related to standardization and you will see later on how that it is related. So we have two categories that have to go under um, a conformity assessment, the AI that is safety component of products uh, regulated by product legislation uh, that would have to be um, a conformity assessed uh, or, uh, under the already existing relevant uh, sector legislation. And then after it is being certified, there would be also the post market surveillance. So that means that when the AI system product or component of a product goes into the market, it is placed on the market, the surveillance and the, and the, um, and the, and the safety clauses to ensure that um, AI system is safe for using uh, do not stop. And then we have the uh, other high risk systems, as I told you them uh, earlier, the second list, 
the standalone uh, products that would go, have to go under conformity assessment through internal control. In this case, much of this is self-assessment, but if it is provided um, by a separate legislation, that would, it would have to be also third party conformity assessment. Uh, so um, what it has to be mentioned here is that some legislations, um, some sectors are being um, you know, excluded uh, to, by the scope from the scope of the regulations, such as aviation and cars, but not all of their components are being excluded. So, uh, I mean, uh, most of the components would have to be certified under the specific regulation, the specific um, uh, legislation that exists for aviation and cars, but there are exceptions to those exceptions. Um, uh, and we can go through that later if you want. It's, it's sort of a complicated system. So this is like um, the full ecosystem of all the stakeholders uh, that would have to work together to implement the AI regulation. I know it sounds a bit chaotic, but it is uh, what it is. The role, what is interesting for us today is to see the role of standardization. Sense and LHJ, ATC 21 and ETSI uh, SAI are the two committees of the European standardization uh, that are working on artificial intelligence. And those two committees uh, are being called upon uh, by the Commission to provide the standards that will help um, that will help the manufacturers um, to to uh, go through conformity assessment um, uh, and comply to the AI regulation passport through certification uh, requirements. Uh, as you can see here, um, there should be specific notified bodies designated um, by each member states. Um, to, to conduct conformity assessment for AI. Um, and then um, in case um, those uh, CAPs uh, have to certify a product uh, that it is a component um, of, of another product, then other certified bodies would have to uh, cooperate with them, uh, other conformity assessment bodies would have to cooperate with them in order to carry on with the, with the certification. I will show you an example later on about how that will work. Uh, but let's talk a bit about standardization now. The role of standardization in the so-called new legal framework uh, is a bit different than in the past. In the past, we had the old approach legislation where technical requirements um, uh, for conformity assessment of products would go into the law itself, into the text of the law. That would mean that in, in many cases, people or legislators who are not experts in, 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 in technical areas um, it would be called upon to, to regulate and to prepare legislation uh, with a lot of technical details. Uh, and then the other problem would be that, that every time the technology would progress, uh, then though that legislation would have to be updated and amended, we would have to go through a lengthy um, uh, you know, legislative process to amend them. From now on, uh, the new legal framework, from now on, it means like the last 20 or 30 years, the new legal framework uh, provides that all of these, um, the legislation only includes the high level requirements. And then um, the standardization organizations in the European Bureau are called upon to provide the standards that provide the technical details, how these, um, um, how these requirements would be, would be achieved. And this is a case right now. Um, it's been a few months already um, that the European Commission has sent a draft request to the Sensen Elect JTC21 and, and also to, to Etsy, both organizations of big interest. So um, they have both initiated preparations for the work. And so each of the requirements for the high risk AI systems. Uh, as mentioned before, must be supported by harmonized standards. Hence, there is a long list that you will see in the next slide. But the commission in this case have, um, have opted to go through a phased approach. This means that this standardization request, uh, by the way, the final uh, request will be delivered to us by the end of the year. It relates to the development of ENs uh, in support of standards, of European standards in support of 
trustworthy artificial intelligence, but not harmonized standards. The difference I told you before is that the harmonized standards are being prepared after a request by the European Commission to support the implementation of legislation. And the ENs, European standards, without the age in front of them, they are just voluntary uh, standards uh, not connected to an implementation of any legislation. So this request on the first phase, it is not a request for harmonized standards. The problem is that, as I told you before, the AI Act is not adopted yet. And we don't know when it is going to be adopted. There is some forecast about it, maybe in 2023. But since we do not know that, we do not know the final text of the legislation. And we cannot create harmonized standards on how the, um, the legislation would be implemented if we do not know uh, the final text of the legislation and, and um, uh, they will lies the details. So this request is as expected uh, to be amended by the European Commission when the uh, AI Act will be adopted, hopefully by the end of next year, in order to request the European standard organizations the development of harmonized standards in style. That would be the final standards to be developed um, by the sense of like an Etsy to support the implementation uh, of the legislation. Um, on in, but at this point, to be honest, the standards developed at the first phase uh, by the ESOs, by the European organizations, would be pretty much up to 80, 90% of the final result. And after, on the second phase, we will have to do some fine tuning depending on how much uh, amendments, um, how much changes have occurred upon uh, the final text of the legislation. So, JTG21 proactively already works in cooperation for like eight or nine months now uh, with the European Commission. We have like eight, uh, eight people uh, from the European Commission participating in the meetings of the JTC21, preparing the work for the harmonized standards. ETSI, SAI is also involved. Um, um, SAI means securing artificial intelligence, as Joseph told you before. A roadmap is being planned as, as well as a work program to respond to the needs of the standards. And yes, we are still going through the gap analysis. Uh, we are now um, you know, doing it in collaboration also with ISO Subcommittee 42, the International Committee of Artificial Intelligence. And I think um, uh, Peter will tell you more about it later. Uh, many of the needs uh, that we do have may be covered by international standards, if appropriate to the law requirements. Um, and also one, need that, one thing that we need to know is that some trustworthiness aspects um, cannot be handled by JTC21 due to lack of expertise. We only have AI experts in JTC21, but you also have other aspects related, for example, with security. And for the security specifications, for example, we would have to collaborate with other uh, technical committee of experts in European standardization, like JTC13, which is about cybersecurity. And this is like um, a snapshot of the first draft request by the European Commission. You can see it includes a whole uh, lot of standards on all the aspects of the trustworthiness uh, certification um, that would, would have to be delivered by the end of 2024. That timeline, that, that, that date might change, though. We don't know yet. Um, so a couple of challenges that we have uh, about uh, standardizing artificial intelligence is that the future AI Act will put forward definitions for several critical terms in an AI context that are, however, already included in the draft request, uh, which hence are not defined yet. So therefore, the use of terms such as accuracy or transparency or governance or information to the users um, are, can only be unclear at this stage. And these definitions, I think, may be drawn from international standards. No need to reinvent uh, the will if the law is being satisfied and the commission as well is being satisfied. Uh, the other thing is that standards should harmonize characteristics, processes, operations, or elements that are common to as many AI systems as possible. But taking intended purpose into consideration, uh, which, is, um, which is an element that defines you know, the risk, uh, it would require developing standards for each intended purpose, fragmenting the potential harmonization. The notion of reasonably foreseeable uses, mid uses, 
appears more appropriate in this case rather than intended purpose. And by the way, if you look into what intended purpose means, uh, there is there is a there is a document uh, published by the European Commission providing uh, definitions and providing explanations about um, um, about um, uh, this, uh, these terms. So the intended purpose is not only related uh, to the, um, uh, the manufacturer's intention, to the declaration of the manufacturer of what the product is intended for, but also to the capability of the product itself. So the manufacturer might say that I, I have created this product with this intended purpose that I declare, uh, but the product might be capable for more. In any case, vertical standards will be able to build on this approach too. And this is still um, uh, under discussion. Finally, um, this is a legislative train timeline forecast for the AI uh, Act. Uh, as I told you, there are more than 3,000 amendments submitted today. We still wait for the committee report pending for this month. Then we're going to have the trialogue between the European institutions. Um, and then it's going to be put under approval if we do manage to agree. The first standardization request that we will only deliver standards uh, that are voluntary will be somewhere here uh, by the end of this year. And then by the end of 23, we're going to have the final standardization request by the European Commission to provide the harmonized standards that will provide uh, the presumption of conformity um, uh, to, to, to the law. Finally, the big picture of standards and how they support uh, product certification complementarity. Imagine you have a smartphone, okay? That smartphone would have to be certified under AI regulation for trustworthiness, security of AI system embedded. But the same smartphone would have to be certified under the RAID, the radio equipment directive that I told you before that is actually uh, for wireless IoT devices, and then certified under the new Cyber Resilience Act uh, when application commences. And then it would be certified also under the CHIPS Act for the security of the chip components, and then also under the EDAS. For uh, those of you that um, are familiar to EDAS, the Electronic Identification, Authentication, and Trust Services Regulation for the security of mobile based IoT solutions, so called digital identity wallets also certified under the general product safety regulation um, and under the GDPR uh, if, uh, if we have certification schemes sometime in the future. So the same product, multi-certification, this is a new, uh, you know, this is a new legal landscape um, and certification that the standardization in Europe has to support. And um, we are now working on multiple, uh, on multiple fronts uh, developing uh, standards for the application of the RED, huh? the wireless IoT devices, um, you know, certification, the CRA, which is the next legislation that will be adopted in two years that will replace the RED and will go beyond the wireless to the wired devices. And then also for the AI regulation harmonized standards, the CHIPS Act, which is still pending before the parliament, but we will also have to deliver standards for that and also uh, the EDAS that we have already produced some standards, but there will be a gap analysis for more standards required. So uh, to the big picture is that the standardization is very much related to the implementation of the European digital regulation um, from, from security to, to artificial intelligence uh, to, to safety. And that was all on my behalf. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Kosantinos, for your presentation. Uh, for detailed presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure to invite now Mr. Peter Dusen to present to us an overview and major standard standardization achievements of the International Standardization Committee, ISO IC, JTC1, CS42, for artificial intelligence. So, Mr. Dusen is a technical expert of the International Standardization Committee, ISO IC, JTC1, CS42, on artificial intelligence. Mr. Dusen represents Microsoft in the German Dean Standardization Committees for Artificial Intelligence. He is a valuable contributor for various international standards on topics such as uh, risk management on artificial intelligence and the impact assessment on organization using AI uh, technology. We look forward to hear this presentation. 
Mr. Dusen, the floor is uh, yours. Okay, thank you, Stefanos. Thank you for the uh, very kind introduction. Um, and thank you all for your interest in artificial intelligence uh, and SC42, um, the International Committee on Artificial Intelligence. Uh, let me go full screen. Uh, can you confirm that you can see my slides? Yes, perfect. Yes. Okay, very, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, so I've been asked to provide you with an overview and uh, some information about major standardization achievements of uh, uh, SC42. And uh, in terms of the agenda, I will provide you with, the, uh, with this overview, talking a little bit about the scope, uh, uh, about SC42's roles, about you know the level of participation that we have, about you know what has happened in the uh, uh, previous uh, period and previous months, how we are. How 42 has grown. I will talk a little bit about outreach activities, and I think this is in particular uh, of interest here a little bit about the collaboration between uh, uh, SC42 and SENS and ELECT JTC21. I will talk about the work program, uh, give you a very brief overview about published uh, standards, ongoing projects, and work uh, under preparation. Uh, of course, you know, I will tell, tell you a little bit about the structure, how 42 is organized, and then I will uh, use a little bit of time to uh, tell you a little bit about some of the projects 42 is doing, um, which I believe are important uh, uh, also, also in the context of uh, the Artificial Intelligence AI Act of the European Commission. Right, so let's right start. Uh, let's right go into the overview. Um, SC42 is the uh, uh, um, subcommittee of JTC1 of ISO uh, IEC. JTC1 means uh, Joint Technical Committee. That's a committee uh, that's you know um, um, uh, responsible for all kinds of uh, IT I, I, ICT standardization. And the scope of SC42 is standardization in the area of artificial intelligence. Uh, it's also, you know, uh, the idea is that uh, 42 serves as a focus and proponent of uh, JTC1 standardization program on artificial intelligence and to provide guidance to JTC1, IEC, and ISO committees developing artificial intelligence application. 42 is a relatively new committee. It was established uh, 2017 in, uh, in, in Beijing, uh, which means we are now ready to publish, uh, or we have just now published the, the first round of uh, standards. More to come, but you know, we have uh, already a lot of uh, documents uh, under publication. Uh, committee manager is Heather Benko from ANSI, and uh, our chair is Wael Diab from the US national body. Um, so if we would like to understand SC42's roles, then it's probably best to see it in a way of an ecosystem approach. So, you know, on top you have things like uh, non-technical trends and requirements, such as application domain requirements, regulatory and policy requirements. The AI Act, draft AI Act was already mentioned. Emergency societal requirements, business requirements, and so on. And uh, the 42 perspective here is to, you know, take these requirements uh, uh, for the context of use and AI, big data and analytics, and, you know, going to develop horizontal and fundamental uh, uh, documents here that, um, uh, that aim on enabling, accelerating the right adoption of uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, um, technology and uh, artificial intelligence systems, of course, while addressing all the concerns uh, that uh, are around this technology. So 42 uh, um, uh, uh, works on sev several types of deliverables, uh, foundational concepts, for instance, we have uh, uh, a strong work program with regard to data. We talk, let's look a little bit into reference architectures and use cases, application guidelines, frameworks, guidance documents. Well, most of 42 documents are guidance documents. 
uh, we probably will look in the future into interoperability. Right now, we don't have a project here, but very important is our work on management system standards. And I will tell you a little bit about this uh, later on. Okay, so these are all deliverables that are intended to uh, uh, support also uh, application related standards, so the domain specific uh, documents uh, for, I don't know, um, uh, manufacturing, for automotive, uh, for uh, health uh, care. Um, open source project can use uh, 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 our documents. And of course, you know, if there's a variety solution, then it also might benefit from uh, taking into account SC42 deliverables. So that we have uh, implementation uh, of those standards in diverse application domains, uh, manufacturing, healthcare, finance, consumer devices, uh, ITC, for instance. Um, we have uh, right now um, 35 participating members and 16 observing members. The blue ones are the participating ones in that uh, map, uh, the yellow ones, the, the observing. So the difference between a uh, participating member and observing member is that participating members have full voting rights, observing members only restricted voting rights. So and we hope that many of the observing members decide to become uh, participating members. But uh, 42 already has grown considerably large. Uh, and you see, you know, large parts of the world map is already covered by 42. Um, we have right now 15 published documents, uh, 25 active projects. Uh, a number numbers are growing, actually. Um, we are about to start two new projects within the next uh, uh, three months and have, uh, I don't know, three, four, five projects in the queue that might, uh, uh, might be initiated uh, in the near future. Uh, said, you know, we have um, uh, 51 um, uh, uh, national bodies, so countries contributing to the international standardization. And that is, you know, uh, uh, despite the uh, economic problems that uh, many companies and many countries currently have. So uh, this is, you know, that, that kind of shows the importance of artificial intelligence that, you um, uh, 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 you know, and how it's perceived by uh, those countries and companies. Um, our plenary meetings usually count uh, 20, uh, 250 people, more or less, uh, due, due to the uh, COVID, COVID situation. Most of those uh, 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 plenary meetings in the past were uh, virtual. Hopefully we can go back to uh, um, you know face-to-face -face mode or hybrid mode uh, in the near future, but um, this is still you know um, to be discussed. Anyway, we have uh, more than fifty liaisons, um, thirteen of them uh, category A. You don't need to understand what that is, but you know it's it's important. Uh, and fifty uh, liaisons with other organizations, both within ISO IEC and outside of ISO IEC. That's already a very good number. So we also um, uh, have extended our work program and the diversity of our, our work program. Um, we are now, uh, so in, in the first phase of 42, we were looking into foundational standards, into uh, things like, you know, defining trustworthiness for artificial intelligence, um, uh, doing a little bit technical work on robustness, uh, uh, on, you know, trying to understand what are computational methods here. Now we are looking a little bit about uh, into advanced topics like, you know, management systems for uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, you know, uh, associated documents on uh, certification and audits for such uh, uh, management system standards. We are working on a transparency taxonomy. Uh, we have a strong uh, uh, work on data quality and data quality governance, um, treatment of unwanted bias, oversight of AI systems. That's a very new topic. No project yet has been initiated, but one is in, in preparation. Um, we have an extensive document on use cases, which is currently uh, under, under revision to make it, you know, more useful, more, uh, more 
uh, more aligned uh, um, and better readable. <laughs> better readable is a very very long document and contains very several hundreds of use cases. Way too much to be you know to be useful in total. So we are working on a revision that you know cuts down the number of use cases to something that is really useful and very uh, very good usable for everyone. Um, we are looking into computing devices for machine learning. That means like you know. Uh, 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 chips and uh, processors for, for machine learning, you know, dedicated for machine learning. And uh, uh, we are planning to start some work on guidance for mitigation ethical issues. And there are new areas where we have uh, started work, which is AI testing, verification, validation. There's a joint project with uh, SC7. These are the software and system engineering folks in uh, uh, ISO, IEC. Um, AI enable health informatics. That's uh, 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 activity you know jointly done with ISO TC uh, two fifteen on well, health informatics. Um, in terms of outreach, um, forty two is very active. You know uh, mainly thanks to our chair Wael Diab, who is super active and. Uh, uh, you know, uses any opportunity to uh, promote the uh, 42 work. So we have over a dozen uh, 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 IEC articles and uh, multimedia engagement. Um, we uh, collaborate with uh, ISOCOMS, key articles and uh, outreach plans. Um, we support ISO and IEC AI related initiative. There's for instance, a workshop um, on, um, let me just make this a bit smaller. So on uh, uh, AI with trust, um, last one has happened in Geneva, was very well perceived, very well uh, visited, and was a very interesting and exciting uh, uh, event. Um, there's a lot of progress in existing a new collaboration with various IC and ISO committees. Uh, various subcommittees of JTC1. Uh, and we also um, um, uh, engage with OECD, the European Commission, of course, uh, the uh, United Nations, and you know uh, uh, many other um, um, important committees and bodies of the world. Um, we have launched uh, an ISO IEC workshop series dedicated to the work of um, of ST42, that's uh, a, a B annual workshop um, that bring together, you know, all the actors in artificial intelligence, um, trying to identify uh, uh, emerging trends, technology requirements, applications, and of course, you know, understand and promote the role of standards uh, uh, here. Um, in May last year. No, May this year. Sorry, we have the uh, uh, the the first workshop that had as uh, five hundred registration per session, and it was a three days workshop with uh, um, uh, I think four sessions per day in total, and we had three hundred attendees that attended uh, all those sessions in in in, in average. And um, you know, since uh, uh, May was almost six six months ago, the registration for the second workshop is open. It will take and take place in November. And to make a little bit of a advertisement here, uh, that workshop will contain four tracks. One is about uh, one uh, is about uh, AI application in healthcare. A second one about is about beneficial AI, so understanding the um, you know the uh, the advantages of using artificial intelligence. Usually, you hear about the risks, right? So about you know what can can go wrong, but you know it's also important to talk about you know what uh, benefit could be provided by artificial intelligence technologies. Um, then there's another track about novel AI standardization approaches, both horizontal and vertical. So to understand the uh, role of horizontal documents in all this and trying to you know, explain how they can be used for uh, um, uh, certification for audits and for conformity assessment. And finally, we have a, a, tra a track on emerging AI technologies, uh, trends and requirements. 
Um, so if you would like to register, I have uh, added the registration link to my presentation, and I'm pretty sure that uh, 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 CYS will distribute the slide deck uh, after the, this event so that you can you know, follow that link. And I hope that you will join us in, uh, at the end of the month, virtually this time. Hopefully we will have uh, opportunities to do this uh, as you know, face-to-face -face or hybrid meetings. Okay, um, I promised to talk a little bit about the collaboration with uh, Sense and Elect JTC21, which is the counterpart of 42 on European level. So first of all, um, after long discussions and uh, a, a lot of uncertainty here, now uh, we ha have confirmation that the so-called Vienna Agreement can be applied for the collaboration between the two committees. That is an agreement between CEN and ISO that um, um, explains how CEN and ISO committees can, be, can work together. Uh, it defines uh, four modes, um, you know, for uh, um, 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 ranging from the exchange of documents, like, you know, a normal liaison between organizations, uh, attending uh, mutual attendance of meetings, um, to the adoption of ISO work as European norms. Uh, no, and uh, the, the strongest form of collaboration would be the parallel development of a document both in uh, SEN committee and uh, an ISO committee. That means both committees will work jointly together on a document. And when it gets published, it will be published as both an ISO standard and a European norm. Um, so um, we are now certain that the Vienna Agreement can be applied for the collaboration. So 21 is taking steps here. Um, looking uh, which 42 documents can be adopted as European norm, either modified and unmodified. Um, uh, two documents already have been approved for, uh, um, for adoption. That's uh, the document on concepts and terminology, terminology. I will talk about this one a bit later. And the other one is uh, the machine learning framework. Uh, currently under discussion are uh, 42001, the management system standard of uh, SC42. Um, I will talk about this one later as well, and the uh, 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 4249 series on data quality, also something that I will address in the, uh, in, in the later slide. Um, these are currently under discussion whether they should be adopted, modified, unmodified, uh, or at all by uh, um, uh, JTC1 as European norms. On the other side, SC42 has decided uh, during the meeting, uh, last, last plenary meeting in, uh, well, beginning of this month, that uh, uh, 42 uh, uh, will establish an uh, NR talk group to understand which 21 projects are candidate for parallel development according to the Vienna Agreement. Um, so that means if 21, for instance, has a document that is not specific to European demands, European regulations, things like this, then it's, but you know, can be useful on a global level, then it's certainly candidate for parallel development and 42 is about to evaluate which projects of uh, 21 are candidates here. And uh, well, then it's up to the discussion between uh, the leaderships of both committees and the committees and the national bodies of those committees uh, uh, to, uh, to decide if this is going forward or not. But, you know, right now we are in an analysis phase. So what is under discussion right now is um, how SC42 work can leverage to address the standardization uh, requests of the European Commission in the context of the Draft AI Act, which is uh, something a lot of a lot of uh, um, participants in both committees look, uh, um, you know, with a very keen eye, because um, the European Commission has put very short timeline to 21 to address their standardization request. Right now, it's draft standardization request. We don't even have the, um, you know, final one even for the first phase. 
Um, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, um, um, anxiety and a lot of people are very nervous that 21 can address those standardization requests uh, if they are start work, homegrown work, you know, from the scratch. So uh, at least some of the standardization requests, if they could be addressed by uh, uh, 42 work, that would be, you know, a great advantage and uh, um, um, something that really should be considered by uh, JGC 21. So there's discussion ongoing. Um, and uh, if you're interested to contribute to this discussion, of course you are, well, as we heard uh, uh, from, from, from Stefanos and from uh, that, that you are invited to join the, 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 the committee. Right, um, that is my overview over the, uh, over SC42. I'm will now going to uh, uh, explain a little bit about the work program. This will be in a short part of my uh, presentation. Um, we have, as I said, 15 published standards uh, 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 in the area of foundational documents, uh, AI concepts and terminology, and the framework for machine learning, uh, um, where, you know, uh, under the first documents that has been published. We have several things on trustworthiness, um, 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 on overview document, uh, technical report on bias, a document on uh, uh, governance that has been developed jointly with uh, SC40. SC40 are the uh, governance folks in, um, in, in, in JTC1. We have a document on ethics, also a technical report and uh, a document about uh, the assessment of robustness of neural networks. That's part one of a two part series. The second part is right is now, you know, we expect that it will be published within the next month, next six to 12 months. We have a document on use cases that I already have uh, mentioned. We have strong work on data, uh, um, uh, various document on big data, which is also in scope of SC42. And a few things on computational methods, an overview document, and a document on the assessment of machine learning, classification, and performance. Um, we have 25 projects under development. I will not go through the whole list, uh, but, um, um, you know, uh, just as an announcement, I have selected some of those projects uh, for you know highlight presentation uh, uh, a little bit later, and uh, for the second session to go a little bit more in depth in uh, uh, other projects. Um, so my selection of those uh, uh, projects that I will you know talk in more detail about. That's purely subjective, right? It's you know my personal opinion that these are you know. Uh, uh, one of the, you know, the, 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 uh, have the potential to be very impactful and uh, uh, very important for uh, uh, the future, both for industry and also for uh, in the context of regulations. Um, if you ask somebody else, a completely different list will come out of this. So please take this as, uh, um, you know, subjective uh, uh, um, opinion from my side. I believe these projects are important. And uh, uh, if I miss something that you feel important, just us, I can provide you with information about, you know, almost uh, every one of these uh, projects. Right, um, there's work under preparation. Um, for instance, uh, a project on uh, requirements uh, for bodies, uh, providing audit certification of artificial intelligence, uh, uh, management systems. This is a supportive document for uh, uh, for the 2001 document a project you will hear about later on uh, and describes you know what competences need for auditors what's the time needed for audit what are the resources here how, how to do it and this is a very important document to make uh, the management system standard for, two, for the 2001 you know um, um, uh, certifiable and uh, you know uh, may enable third party auditors to uh, um, provide an assessment of conformance to uh, those to, to this document. 
And there's a new technical report on environmental sustainability aspects of artificial intelligence, which kind of complements work that's also discussed in JTC 21. And we are currently looking, you know, how to bring both things together. If this, for instance, would be a target for parallel development of, of uh, 21 and 42, or, you know, if the 21 work is too European specific for parallel work. Right. Let me uh, uh, go quickly through the um, um, uh, SC42 structure. We have five regular working group, foundational standards. The lead is uh, Paul Cotton from uh, Canada here. We have a working group on data, Ro Chang from, sorry, it's not EE, it's US. Ro Chang is from the uh, US national body. That's a typo, I'm not sure how this come from. Um, on, um, we have a working group three on trustworthiness, David Philip from the Irish national body uh, chairs this one. We have, there's something missing. Uh, we have a working group on use cases and applications under the leadership of uh, Japan. Um, uh, we have working group five, computational approaches and computational characteristics of AI systems. Lin Song from China convenes this uh, group. And we have two uh, joint working group. One is with SC7 on testing uh, of AI systems. Adam Smith from UK uh, is the convener of this group from the SC42 side. And Stuart Reed from also from UK is the convener from the SC7 side. And uh, another working group uh, three is about to be established um, uh, with uh, ISO TC 215 about AI enabled health informatics. Uh, convenership is right now under discussion, but we are pretty sure you'll find a good, good uh, assignment uh, here um, um, pretty soon. We have several ad hoc groups and advisory groups. The first one is uh, a, a group on AI standardization road mapping. I'm the lead of Patrick Bizomps from Bizom from the French national body. Uh, this group uh, is busy, you know, providing an overview. Uh, of the 42 projects and uh, identify the relationships uh, between those projects and also identifying gaps and opportunities for future standardization. Um, there's an ad hoc group, uh, which is pretty permanent. It is now established, we established the third time um, uh, about the liaison with SC27. SC27, these are the cybersecurity folks in uh, uh, JTC1. And of course, uh, artificial intelligence raises a lot of concerns with regard to uh, security. Um, so this liaison is very important for both committees. And well, the convener, uh, uh, I'm the convener of this group. Um, the purpose here is, you know, to understand what 27 is doing in terms of artificial intelligence and provide feedback to their projects. There's an opposite group in uh, 27 doing more or less the same. Um, uh, um, and, uh, you know, we are collaborating strongly with, uh, uh, with you know, with each other. Um, there's a more technical thing, I talk about six, about, about logistics relative to command resolution uh, uh, for CD and disk ballots, whatever that is. Um, I don't go into details here, but Paul Cotton is a convener of this. Uh, this is very technical. Uh, more important for uh, this group is ad hoc group seven, which is about considering potential SC42 projects for joint development on the Vienna agreement. I mentioned this. Convenership is currently under discussion. Hopefully, we will have a, a, a person or you know a group of persons, two per, well, co convener and co-convener, uh, determined within the uh, following weeks. Right, that's the overview of the 42 groups. Um, I'd like to conclude the first part of uh, my, present, my, my, my round of presentations to give you a few highlights on things we are doing in, in 42. The first one is uh, the project on concepts and terminology. The second one, the overview of ethical societal concerns and then the series on data quality for analytics and machine learning. And I think these are three very, uh, very interesting uh, work items also in the context of you know, what's going on in Europe. 
Right, so um, the project 22989, Concepts and Terminology, uh, has the uh, scope that it uh, um, establishes a terminology for artificial intelligence and describing, describing uh, concepts in the field of artificial intelligence. Um, the idea is that this document can be used uh, in the development of other standards, but also to support communication about diverse interested parties or stakeholders. And this includes certainly regulators around the world. Uh, and then, you know, we have the boilerplate text this document is applicable for all types of organizations, commercial enterprise, government agencies, agencies not for profit organizations. The editor is uh, my colleague Wei Wei from uh, Germany. Um, it has been published earlier uh, uh, this year. And uh, we immediately got, um, you know, some complaints about editorial problems here. Uh, uh, from the Japanese national body. So a uh, defect editing group has been established to address those editorial problems. Um, um, and we will see, you know, whether it's really just editorial, which wouldn't be, you know, a big problem, then we, you know, provide an uh, addendum or something like this, or, you know, uh, uh, implementing changes in the next revision. Or whether it's technical, then we probably have to do something uh, more, more, more uh, radical. The, um, um, uh, the, the most radical thing that we could do would be an early revision of the document. Uh, you have to know that international standards are revised regularly every five years but you can do an early revision. So if you have a serious defect in the, in the document, then you could have a revision uh, before that five year uh, uh, um, cadence. Right, um, main contents, definitions and concepts relevant for artificial intelligence, uh, general concepts, um, uh, concepts related to machine learning, Examples of machine learning algorithms. This is, of course, you know, an open list. Right now, we have uh, 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 very many of those algorithms, but you know, in the future, we will have more. So, this list can never be exhaustive. Uh, it uh, document addresses what's meant by autonomy, heteronomy, and automation. Uh, it looks a little bit, you know, the relationship to Internet of Things and uh, cyber physical systems. It addresses trustworthiness characteristics of artificial intelligence systems. It talks on a very general level about AI verification and validation. It addresses uh, jurisdictional issues and it also addresses societal impacts. It has a stakeholder uh, model describing stakeholder roles uh, in relation to the artificial, to artificial intelligence. It has a very um, high level life cycle for artificial intelligence systems. Um, it provides a functional overview about uh, artificial intelligence systems, you know, tries to uh, address the AI ecosystems. Um, uh, application fields of artificial intelligence, applications of artificial intelligence, and it contains an annex that maps the AI system lifecycle with the OECD definition of artificial intelligence systems. So it's a quite comprehensive and uh, uh, a document that contains a lot of things. Of course, it's an overview document, concepts and terminology. So it doesn't go very deep into any of those cons of these uh, uh, topics. But you know that's not the purpose of this document. It's more you know provide foundational uh, 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 foundational aspects that can be used for you know more dedicated work of SD42 and more dedicated work in other committees. Um, I decided to give you um, uh, one particular definition of this uh, uh, document, the most important one perhaps about artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence systems. So artificial, artificial intelligence is described as in, in the meaning of a discipline, namely uh, research and development of meca mechanisms and applications of AI systems. While AI system is defined as an engineered systems that generates output, such as contents, forecast, recommendations, or decisions for a given set of human defined objectives. Well, I know a lot of people that are not happy with this, 
Um, but please keep in mind, this is the result of a four years discussion. It's highly controversial and just be, it was distributed uh, uh, up to the last minute. In particular, for that you could not get consensus on definition of artificial intelligence as a system property or capability. So it's you know just uh, a discipline, and um, um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence system is then you know uh, what most of the documents talks about. We seek to have an alignment with the OECD uh, definitions of uh, artificial intelligence systems and um, uh, the uh, definition of the European Union, uh, at least as they were available during the development of the project. I think they have changed a little bit and the definition of the European Union is, as we heard about, you know, is still under discussion. So uh, that's a very difficult topic. Um, um, but, you know, you have to keep in mind, this is more or less the best 42 could do. And um, we will certainly see, uh, 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 you know, the discussion, uh, you know, uh, we start again when we will have the next revision of the document. Um, with regard to the life cycle, this picture, you know, shows the general model. As I said, it's a very high level uh, life cycle, um, identifying you know, the, uh, the main phases here. Doesn't go into details. The intention is to provide a template that can be used by other standardization works. So for instance, we have another project in SC42 working group four, um, um, describing, you know, more in more detail what has happened to any of those steps in the life cycle. What are the requirements here? What are uh, the, 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 what have, you know, what has to be done at each of these uh, phases. Um, but, you know, the idea is that for the two documents should use this template uh, in their work. I mean, it's good as any template, right? As good as any life cycle uh, model and uh, base uh, their consideration on uh, this, this graphic. Um, okay, good. This was uh, my uh, account for 22989. Uh, as I said, has been published, um, um, uh, can be uh, obtained from the, from, the, uh, ISO web, from the ISO website. There's uh, some um, um, activities to make this publicly available. So it should be available, well, it can be available to all of you and probably, you know, without, without, you know, free of charge. The next project I like to look a little bit more deeply into is the overview of ethical and societal concerns. The scope here is the document provides a high level overview of uh, AI ethical and societal concerns. Um, it uh, provides information in relation to principles, processes, and methods in this area. Um, the intention is that it can be used by technologies, regulators, interest groups, and society at large, but it does not intend to advocate or you know, gives any specific set of values or uh, does not define a value system because, you know, this is at least we, for the two beliefs, this is not appropriate for technical standard. Right, the editor here is uh, Viveka Bonde from the Swedish national body, and it has been published, I think, uh, earlier on this year. It's also, yeah, it's a 2020-2022 standard. Um, give you a little bit about, uh, overview about the contents here. It talks about fundamental sources, ethical framework, human rights uh, practices, uh, theme and principles uh, uh, in ethics that can be applied to artificial intelligence. Example of practices for building and using ethical and societal acceptable artificial intelligence. Uh, talking about aligning internal processes to AI principles uh, and consideration uh, of ethical uh, of, an, of an ethical review framework. Um, Considerations for building and using ethical and societal acceptable artificial intelligence and a non exhaustive list of ethical and societal consideration. It also uh, provides a review of several principles document. There's the Bergman Klein report. There are a few doc global documents, documents from North America, South America, Africa, European, Asia, Eurasia, and uh, uh, Asia Pacific. 
And finally, it has uh, a few uh, um, use case studies. So interesting document, technical report. Um, there's the follow-up work in the planning that uh, will try to make a little bit more normative, uh, um, um, uh, normative uh, recommendations or even requirements that's up to discussion about how to apply ethics in the context of artificial intelligence. And then there's the um, uh, 42, uh, 52, 59 series of um, data quality for analytics and machine learning. Um, this is a, you know, up to date, a five part document. Uh, first part is on overview and terminology and examples. So walk up from the Korean national body is the editor here. Um, so this gives, you know, uh, uh, an overview about, you know, data quality, uh, uh, all the aspects, provides the terminology, provides a few, you know, examples on how to apply it. Uh, and this, this is the basis for, you know, all other parts of this series. Um, data quality measures. So what are the character characteristics of uh, data quality and how to measure it? is uh, uh, the um, uh, topic of the second part. Uh, Kyung Sok uh, so, uh, Kim from Japanese National Body is the editor here. Um, data quality management requirements and guidelines. So how actually do it uh, is the uh, uh, content of the uh, third part. Martin Zerbeck from Germany is the editor. Um, this is uh, actually a document that contains hard requirements, so you can, in principle, certify against it. Um, the other ones are more on the uh, recommendation level. Uh, data quality process framework, so description of the processes that are actually can be used for, uh, you know, for maintaining data quality. Uh, that's discussed in part four. Juan Song Ma from China, the editor here, and we have a new well, relatively new project, data quality government uh, governance. Uh, Guang Min Kim, also from the Korean National Body, is the editor here. So part one, part four are currently under CD. CD is the um, first uh, inquiry phase where the projects are first presented to uh, uh, you know to a review by national bodies. Before that, uh, you know uh, they developed on expert level, so everybody. Uh, can contribute to them. Now they are in the commenting phase by national bodies and uh, um, for part one, part three and part four, the CD consultation, the submission of comments just has, has, been, has finished. Um, uh, the uh, working group two, where this is the project is done, um, will start the um, evaluation and processing of those comments uh, pretty soon. Uh, part um, two is, uh, yes, part two is currently under, um, under, under consultation. So there's still a chance to uh, contribute to this phase. But there will be other phases, so it's not too late, even if you have concerns about you know, what's going on there. And the last part is a very relatively new project has been uh, approved by uh, uh, earlier this year. So they are still in working draft phase, which means uh, work is done on expert level, uh, um, uh, which is you know pretty informal, uh, and you know the idea is to collect the necessary contents of the document before it you know has been brought to the attention of national bodies. Right to give you uh, in sketch, you know uh, some idea on how this looks like. Uh, this is the uh, data management lifecycle and data quality management lifecycle that has is, is described in the third part um, um, of the uh, of the series. So you see there's um, uh, on top. Uh, uh, data management data lifecycle. Um, that, comp con that comprises of phases like data requirements, data planning, data acquisition, data preparation, data provisioning, and data release uh, that um, um, should be, you know, can be used by uh, uh, machine learning projects, for instance. And this is uh, complemented by um, 
verification and validation, change management, configuration management uh, aspects, and general um, um, uh, management aspects like data motivation and uh, conceptualization, specification of data, planning of uh, data, acquisition of data, uh, pre-processing and augmentation, data provisioning and decommissioning. And you know the the, the bottom part here is uh, um, is 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 described in the um, third part um, uh, requirements of the five part series, while the uh, upper part is described in the uh, first part, the overview and basic concept document of the of the series. So the idea is really to develop at least the first um, 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 four parts. Um, in parallel. Um, so they are interlocked in their uh, development, which is of course sometimes difficult, but we're trying our best to bring them uh, under publication in time. Okay, I think this concludes the first part of my presentation. Thank you very much. And if you have questions or remarks, well, you can ask them either now within the remaining Eight, nine minutes that we have before uh, this session concludes and we go, go into the break or at the end of uh, the whole event today where we have uh, time for discussion. I think it's okay to open now uh, a session of uh, questions and answers. Mr. Peter and Mr. Chutos will kindly answer any questions you, uh, you may have. So there are two ways or to uh, write your question uh, to the chat box of uh, our platform, Zoom, um, or you can raise your hand and give you the, uh, uh, the speech to, to make your question. So please, for your questions. Yes. This is Constantinos. Uh, just yes. information for those who do not remember how to raise a hand on the bottom of the screen, there is a smiley face where it says reactions. If you press on it, you can raise a hand there. Ah. Yes, so we have one. Yes, Olio, please. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes of course. Uh, this is Olga, I'm a Chief Innovation Officer of Science Center of Excellence. I have one question about data pre-processing. So you mentioned it in your last slide. And I'm wondering whether the process for, for this data pre-processing has been uh, uh, de described in detail. For example, does it include data cleaning? Uh, what yes. kind, what, what's permiss, permiss, uh, sorry, what is permissive, what is not permissive in this uh, situation? how you allow for different types of data, medical data, GDPR protected data, uh, anonymized data, etc. cetera. Uh, yes, uh, partial. So um, application, uh, so vertical aspects, like you know, uh, how to deal with uh, medical data or things like this have not been considered in this document because you know it's a vertical, it's, it's a horizontal document and uh, that would be would not be in scope. But the phases for data uh, preparation uh, has been described in more detail as it is shown on this slide. So. Um, um, uh, I, 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 I don't know it by, I don't, don't know, do it by heart, you know, how, how the description is, I have to look it up, but uh, there's a lot of material about this in um, the part three of this document already. Uh, so this goes way deeper than it is, you know, just described on the slide. Thank you very much. And uh, Peter, is this document already available for uh, for use or for review? No, oh, no, no, it's not. So uh, to access, access it, you actually have to be uh, an expert in working group two, which in turn means you, I think, you know, it's the same, uh, same uh, uh, as in Germany and uh, in Cyprus, uh, you have to join the, 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 the mirror committee to be assigned as an expert. I'm sorry, it's not, uh, that, that, that's a point. Uh, ISO tries to be as transparent and open as possible with, with their work, 
But um, of course, you know, all this is uh, um, on the uh, intellectual property rights by ISO and um, um, pop documents are usually not made publicly available until they are in the last phase of the development. So um, um, you in principle can access, for instance, a risk management specification that I, I'm the editor of, and I will talk about this a little bit later, because you know this is almost under publication now, but this is in an early phase of development. You cannot access this uh, you know, from outside the standardization system. Sorry for this, but you know, it is as, as it is. Uh, no, no worries. I think I'm a, I believe I'm a member of the mirror committee, so that's so then, much easier. Then, then thank you very much. Right? So if there is no other question, um, let us proceed to, uh, I don't know if we can wait another two minutes and uh, proceed to a break for 20 minutes and we'll come back for the rest of the presentations. Okay, thank you very much. And we uh, join again in 20 minutes. 11 and 10. Thank you, thank you, Maria. So, Mr. Peter, uh, for the second part of uh, your presentation, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. You. So, um, in the second part of um, this event, I will talk about three projects. The first one is the AI management system, and then I will a little bit talk about uh, risk management and AI system impact assessment. So let's directly start with uh, what the 2001. In terms of the agenda, uh, we'll give you an overview, um, tell you a little bit you now about the relationship uh, uh, to audit and certification, while well, we will review the scope, the structure of the uh, document. And I will provide you with an, ex well, to give you a feeling how it looks like, uh, how the document is, uh, 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 you know, what the logic of the document is. I will give you uh, uh, an example on uh, how requirements, controls, and implementation guidance work together. Right, so um, what is a management system standard? A management system standard is um, a document that um, is intends to help organizations to improve their performance uh, by a specific repeatable step that organizations uh, consciously implement to achieve their goals and objectives, and to create an organizational structure that reflexively engages a continuous cycle of self evaluation correction and improvement of operation and processes to highlight to, to heightening employees' awareness and management leadership and commitment. So this is from the uh, ISO website and explains a little bit what management system standards are about. Um, so um, those documents are kind of the uh, flagship or you know, crown jewels of international standardizations. There are only 60 management system standards in all ISO and IEC which is uh, just a small fraction of the more than 10,000 documents that both committees are, have, have published. So um, a committee starting a management system standard project, they really, you know, they um, uh, really believe that they are to, to be taken serious and that they have to provide something very important to the, uh, for, the, for the community, for industry and for others. So, um, for the 2001, or it's you know also called AIMS, like artificial management intelligence management system, um, is a management uh, standard system standard that uh, uh, you know is about the responsible development and use of artificial intelligence. Um, you probably are uh, familiar with ISO 9001. That's the far most um, prominent uh, uh, um, management system standard ISO has. 
Um, but you know, uh, yeah, I think the, the, the second most prominent is 27,001 on security management. 9,001 is of course on quality management. And you know, starting a project like this is really highly strategic. It uh, uh, can be expected that this document will have a high political impact and a very high market uh, relevance. Right. Um, it has to be noticed that AIMS will be an audit, audit, auditable and certifiable standard. So audits, you know, this is a, a, a vital part on the management system approach um, that and the idea is to enable organizations to check how well their achievements meet the objectives, um, uh, uh, their objectives and how to show conformance uh, to the standard. ISO recognizes three different forms of uh, uh, such assessments. First one is third party assessment, you know, same organization, this is self attestation. Uh, uh, companies explain how they use a certain document, but there's no independent or uh, 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 second or third party validation of this. If a customer or supplier uh, uh, performs the assessment, then we have a third party uh, 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 audit or third party assessment. And um, the third party uh, assessment is when an uh, independent organization, which is trusted by you know, both the uh, organization and the customer or supplier does this uh, uh, assessment. So um, this is usually, uh, uh, no, this is embedded in the um, um, accreditation infrastructure that most countries have. So for instance, in Germany, there's the German uh, um, um, Office for Accreditation that um, acts on behalf of the German government and accreditates auditors um, to uh, uh, be able to do management system standards um, 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 audits and certification. So for instance, if in Germany, you want to achieve uh, 9001 uh, certification, then you have to um, you have to uh, 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 you have to find an auditor who is uh, that or who that is um, uh, uh, DAX um, um, uh, accredited, uh, which is at least you know one of the five uh, for, for for big ones you know. Um, 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 uh, Ernest and Young or um, um, uh, Deloitte or um, PwC. Um, and uh, they then will send in the auditors, check documentations, uh, interview your employees, and you know come up with an assessment whether you um, um, conform to 9001 or you know in the future to 42001. Um, and if you know everything went well, you get a certificate. Um, I also called this conformity assessment, and you find details on this on the link I've provided here. Um, right, so uh, for the 2001, as I said, is a management system standard. The scope is that document specifies requirements and provides guidance for establishing, implementing, maintaining, and continually improving an NI management system uh, within the context of an organization. Um, uh, it's uh, intended to be uh, used by organizations providing or using products or services to utilize AI systems. So whenever you do something with AI, you develop system or you use such systems uh, for the 2001 would be, um, you know, would be a, a standard you could in principle claim conformance to. Um, the idea is that the document uh, should help organizations to develop or use the AI system in a responsible way. Um, to meet regulatory requirements, you know, uh, uh, um, obligations related to interested parties and expectations of those interested parties, but you know, in particular to, to follow their objectives. Right, so the editor of this document is Marta Janczarski from the Irish National Body. Uh, currently is in this stage. This means draft international standard. That is a very late phase in the development. Um, uh, there's you know, just another phase, FDIS, final 
draft international standards, which is just a confirmation. Um, so we expect that the um, this ballot will close in, well, it's probably not open yet, will uh, close in three months. So there's ample opportunity to contribute national bodies at this point, but note it's a very late stage. So, uh, uh, um, you know, like and changing the structure or make fundamental technical changes should not be done at this point, you know, provide uh, technical um, 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 improvements, uh, editorial improvements, of course, are always possible. This is something that still can be done. We expect to uh, go to publication in uh, mid, mid of the next year, probably end of the next year, depending on how fast everything evolves. But uh, this that, uh, document is almost done. <clears throat> right, so uh, to explain a little bit of the structure, each international standard has four standard clauses, uh, sections. Uh, uh, um, um, the first one is about scope. Uh, then we have something about normative references. All those documents you have to use in you have to use in connection with this document. Um, then a clause on terminology and another clause on approvations. And then um, uh, the document has uh, uh, another part, the management part, clauses five to ten. Uh, and this part contains the requirement, requirements on how to manage artificial intelligence systems in a responsible way. These clauses, requirements stated in these requirements are mandatory for compliance. You have to follow them. Um, since it's a management, management system standard, you know, uh, it, its structure and uh, text is standardized, standardized itself. Uh, in the directives of ISO and IEC called supplement here. Um, there's an annex that explains uh, uh, or restricts the text that you can use, uh, uh, um, uh, the structure you can use for management system standards. It actually provides you with a, a, a text template and you just put in your you know, the, your, your specific management system, AI in, in, in this case, and this is called common text. You have to follow this. You can extend the common text, but you cannot change it. Um, AIMS has decided to adopt the common text only with minimal changes, uh, which then means that can it can be integrated very easily with other management system standards. So, if you um, want to certify both against 9001 quality management and for 2001 AI, AI system management, then you don't have to um, uh, follow a completely different set of requirements. Requirements are very similar and you can use the same internal structures uh, and you know, man management uh, uh, roles, responsibilities and so on to address them. Um, so uh, the uh, the decision, you know, to leave the common text more or less untouched um, was deliberately to, you know, to ensure compatibility with other management system standards. Where the real flesh of the document is, is a control part, annexes A and B. This is where things get really AI specific. Uh, and this is uh, where um, uh, you describe the technical and organizational measures uh, that can be, can be implemented in support of management requirements. Um, these controls and implementation guidances, these are optional for compliance, but that doesn't mean that organization can just ignore that, right? If an organization likes to ignore a certain control, then they have to provide a very good reason for that. So um, every organizations have to look at those controls at the recommendations uh, in the uh, annexes A and B. And uh, if they feel that control does not apply to them, are not important to them, then they have to you know, provide a documentation why that is the case. So this is a really, really um, strong of optional, strong, strong, strong um, um, form of optionality here. It's not really optional. Um, if you don't have a good reason, you have to you have to implement all the controls. Controls are described in terms of uh, geo objectives that 
as addressed by uh, the, the controls, then the control itself. And then there is some implementation guidance. So um, let me give you a brief overview about the management part, the first uh, uh, five clauses. They address uh, context of the organization. So, you know, you have to understand what your organization is, uh, what are the legal context, the societal context of this organization, what are the uh, interested parties or stakeholders to be uh, taken into account, and you have to determine the scope of your management system. So what systems are actually, you know, in scope of the management system, what is outside of the scope, um, what uh, uh, kind of characteristics you would like to take into account, and so on. Um, this is a very integral part. Uh, uh, um, uh, if you uh, have a very large organization, then like, you know, like Microsoft is, then you don't want to certify the whole organization, but you know only the part of the organizations that are really concerned with the uh, development and provisioning of AI systems, right? Um, there is uh, requirements on leadership. Uh, you know, uh, requirements that say you have to uh, have, have uh, an expressed policy with regard to your commitments uh, on, on artificial intelligence. You have to define organizational roles and responsibilities, provide them with uh, appropriate authorities, authority and so on. Uh, planning addresses, you know, actions to address risks and opportunities. Um, uh, what is not in the common text, but what is specific to AIMS is there are requirements on AI system impact assessment. Um, and then, you know, objectives and planning and how to, to uh, achieve them. Uh, there are uh, requirements on support, you know, you need resources, you need competences, you need base awareness, you have uh, communication and uh, uh, activities in place, and you have to provide documentation, of course. Um, with regard to operation, <clears throat> you have to understand what aspects you would like to um, 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 do during the operation of uh, your systems. And here again, you have to uh, implement your uh, activities with regard to risk assessment, uh, to risk treatment, and to uh, system impact assessment. Performance and evaluation comprises of the monitoring, of measurements, of analysis, of evaluation, of internal audits, and a management review, so that you understand how effective your management system is, that is, uh, you know, um, um, actually, you know, doing what it's supposed to do. And um, um, if this is the case, you know, or if it's not the case, uh, you have to improve it, right? So um, what to do uh, if you uh, notice that you are not in conformance with the management system standard requirements, what to do then, and activities on continual improvement. So this is the, the requirements that you have to follow. Uh, when you um, 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 would like to certify get aims, then this is mandatory stuff. The um, other uh, part is the control part and the implementation guidance, as I said, these are mandatory. Uh, in the sense that if you don't have a good reason to follow them, uh, to, to ignore them, then you cannot ignore them. And there are controls on policies related to artificial intelligence, on the internal organizations, on uh, resources for uh, AI systems, uh, on impact assessment, uh, on uh, uh, the life uh, things to be considered during the life cycle, um, things to be considered during the development life cycle, um, uh, things to be considered in connection uh, uh, with data of artificial intelligence systems, uh, information for interested parties, for other stakeholders, you need to, you know, provide them. Um, use of AI systems, uh, it's another uh, clause on uh, um, controls. And, you know, how to manage third party relationship because, you know, um, modern IT systems like artificial intelligence systems, they are seldom, you know, um, 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 maintained by, you know, or developed by just a single company. There's a lot of components that are used uh, uh, for those systems. 
Um, and uh, you really have to understand what your supply chain chains are, what are the components you use from a different company, what services you use from a different provider uh, uh, that um, um, is used for, for your system. And uh, this is a very integral part uh, of uh, the standards, even if it just you know contains three three sub clauses. But uh, this is really where um, you know one of the most critical, uh, some of the most critical aspects of the uh, document are, are placed. Right, to give you an example on how requirements and controls work together, um, I selected the thing, this is very specific to AIMS, the AI system impact assessment um, uh, activities. So you have a requirement that the organization shall, no way out, you have to do it assess the potential consequences for individuals and societies that can result from the development or use of AI systems. Um, the uh, AI system impact assessment shall determine the potential consequences uh, an AI systems deployment and intended use has to individuals and societies. Um, the uh, result of the system impact assessment shall be documented, made available to relevant trusted parties where appropriate. Um, the organization should consider that a recommendation. Uh, it's not mandatory, but uh, um, organization should really look into these uh, uh, four items. Organization should consider whether an AI system affects legal positions or life opportunity of individuals. So if you have an AI system that is used to uh, uh, select candidates for, for, for a certain job, then uh, it certainly, or you know, uh, um, um, uh, decides whether you get a loan or not. Uh, this is certainly something that uh, affects life opportunities, <laughs> physical or psychological well-being of individuals. That's the whole safety uh, uh, issues that are addressed here. Universal human rights and the society at large. So, if you, for instance, if you have, uh, you know. Um, use uh, 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 artificial intelligence or you know, develop artificial intelligence that can be used to disrupt democratic processes. That would be would go into the uh, clause of society. You really have to understand if this can happen and what you can do about it. Um, well, and of course, this can be integrated in the uh, uh, things on risk management, which are more high level, more on business objectives. I will come to, back to this in, in a few minutes. <clears throat> um, but, you know, if, it, if an organization doesn't want to integrate, then it's up to there, right? So it's, 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 it's your business if they want to do things twice. Um, then we have uh, a control associated with these requirements. Um, um, the objective here is to help organizations to assess uh, 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 AI system impact to individual societies that can be affected by an AI system throughout this life cycle. The control is the organization should assess uh, potential consequences for individuals and societies that would result from the development and use of artificial intelligence systems. And there's a whole text you know, explaining that a little bit better. And there is implementation guidance on this. This is purely uh, uh, optional. You can follow implementation guidance, but you ha don't have to. If it's not appropriate for you, um, then you do something else. But um, this is uh, this tries to be helpful. You know, it provides you with uh, uh, recommendations and guidelines on how to uh, actually, you know, implement a certain control. And um, uh, it uh, one part of the text is topics that the organization should consider can include but not limited to, to for instance the circumstances under which an AI system impact assessment should be performed. It can be include um, um, uh, uh, the criticality of the intended purpose and context in which AI systems is used or any significant changes of these complexity of the AI technology and the level of automation. A sensitivity of data types and sources possessed by the AI systems or any significant changes uh, changes of this. And there's a lot more text on this, but you know, this should explain, you know, how requirements, controls, and implement implementation guidance work together. Right. This is what I like to tell you about AIMS. Uh, this document actually should be accessible 
um, um, from from uh, 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 from uh, certain sources. Not sure if uh, CIS support uh, provides already copy of this, and I think it it has to be go through the this ballot first. So probably should stay tuned for uh, a few few more months. But um, a document as such is well, it, it it approaches publication. Let's put it that way. So if there are questions or remarks, then we can ask them either right now or you know at the end of at the discussion part for the for the whole session. This is depends on you, uh, Mr. Peter. If you want to answer now some questions uh, regarding the management system of AI, or you want to proceed and uh, have at the end a session of questions and answers. Uh, if there's questions of understanding, you know, clarification, then they probably should ask now, but you know, general discussion should be done at the end. Okay, okay. So let's give two minutes if there are any questions and uh, proceed with the next topic. So again, you can use uh, the icon of rising current uh, of the platform <clears throat> or write your question in Yes, Mr. Dimitris. Hello, thank you for the very informative uh, presentation. Um, one question I have, but it may be discussed at the end. Um, are, are organizations expected to retrospectively take a look at possible uses of AI uh, that might be provided, for example, from their cloud providers or it has been in use and conduct these AI impact assessments or is, um, or is only for new developments? Thank you. Uh, um, no, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really about everything that you do with artificial intelligence uh, you know, at, at, the, at the point of certification. So if you use a legacy system, you know, or something that's in place for, I don't know, five years, then it's still in scope of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the certification activities. Of course, all new things you are doing are all also in scope. And uh, if uh, you need to in, you need renew your certificate, uh, then uh, they will also get uh, you know subject of the uh, conformity assessment. No, it's not uh, something that's only related to new things that you are doing. Thank you very much. I don't think there are any more questions. So let's, if this is the case, let's start, go to Proceed, the next. Proceed, yes, to the next topic. So which is about risk management. We heard about risk management already when um, um, Konstantinos talked about the AI Act. Um, I have to, um, I have to uh, uh, make some small warning here. Uh, what's meant by risk management in this document, 23894, is not quite the same as the European Commission, for instance, uh, uh, means when they talk about risks. The European Commission addresses risks uh, uh, in, in a sense of, you know, things that can happen to well, um, um, human beings, to, 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 to um, organizations uh, uh, in, in, in Europe, you know, uh, um, um, but they don't really look into organizational risks. So uh, if your company uh, is losing money by not using a certain AI system or, or by using a certain AI system, this is not in the focus of uh, the AI regulation, of course. I mean, that's that's business, right? Um, but uh, is it in scope of 23894? Nevertheless, 23894 addresses a lot of those external risks, risks to individuals and so on, uh, um, uh, uh, as part of organizational risk. Because you know, the idea is that, well, the, the idea is that uh, an organization that um, uses AI systems or develop AI systems has a certain responsibility against the society and against their, their custom, customers and users of their AI system. So uh, they should take into account uh, uh, safety, uh, safety related issues, you know, all that stuff that we have, to, 
seen uh, uh, in the in the uh, presentation on aims you know um life opportunities uh, uh, physical or psychological well-being human rights or you know uh, impacts to the society at large right so um this is not out of scope it's just that uh, it's part of a of, of of a larger scope and um uh, we designed uh, uh, 23894 explicitly in a way that both the organizational aspects of risk management, losing money, because you know, uh, 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 customers lose, lose, uh, um, lose trust in your products and external risk, you know, people can, can get harmed because they are using your, your AI system, but this is taken into account as well. So um, when, we are talking about AI risk. Please keep this in mind that the notion of risk is broader than the one that the European Commission uh, is using. But you know, it's the, the the view of the Commission, coincidence, is well included in what we are talking about here. So, um, um, uh, two three eight nine four risk management is based on another ISO norm thirty one thousand, which is about risk management in general. Um, and there are a lot of uh, um, things in the uh, in the directives of uh, ISO and IEC saying, okay, if you do risk management, you have to use thirty one thousand. Um, so uh, this was a mandatory thing, but I think we made good uh, use of uh, the underlying uh, ISO document and uh, uh, the extension of uh, 31,000 that we have provided in 42 is really a useful one that at one hand uses uh, existing and well-established uh, um, processes and structures, but uh, extended you know, uh, 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 in, in, in a useful way to artificial intelligence. Well, I will talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the document as such, and then I will talk about, about principles, frameworks, and processes uh, taken from 31,000 and SAR uh, extended to artificial intelligence in uh, this project. Right, so what are artificial intelligence risks? Well, they are related to things like fairness, to security, safety, to privacy, robustness, transparency and explainability, environmental impact, accountability, maintainability, availability uh, and quality of, of data. And of course, the uh, uh, AI exp exp expertise, if you uh, don't have them in the organization, you probably will, you know, uh, will have a quality problem with your, with your product. Um, those risks are caused by several things. Uh, level of automation of an artificial intelligence, for instance. I mean, we expect them to work, uh, to, to, to act automatically or auto autonomically. Um, um, this is why we, we, we using artificial intelligence, you know, to uh, um, have a certain level of automation. But of course, you know, this can cause, uh, uh, um, well, can cause problems, right? Um, the lack of transparency and explainability also causes uh, risk, you know, to fairness, uh, but also to privacy, for instance. Accountability uh, is another thing that's affected here. Um, then we expect artificial intelligence, you know, like control units for, for autonomous vehicles to be able to act uh, uh, in environments which are more complex than those environments, classical systems, non-AI systems can, can, be, can be used, right? But of course, you know, complexity of the environment means that during development time, we probably don't have enough information what can, can uh, going, what, what's, what's going on in those uh, environments, right? Um, there's a lot of unforeseen, uh, unforeseeable situation that our AI system has to deal with. And not all AI systems, you know, meet the, expect meet the expectations there. We see, you know, the ongoing troubles with uh, uh, autonomous driving, um, uh, that uh, the complexity of environment is a very, very, um, you know, um, important source of risks to be considered. Then there are, you know, system lifecycle issues, problems during development or during uh, in, incorrect, um, um, incorrect um, operation of the system. 
uh, hardware issues uh, are to be taken into account as well. Technology readiness, you know, how much is your technology? Is it just a prototype that you suddenly throw, throw on the market and, uh, uh, and um, use it for some, some, some um, customer and uh, uh, consumer and uh, products? Or, you know, is it something which is really tested, really marketed, really, you know, uh, really validated? Um, that's that's another aspect to be considered, and of course, you know, there's a whole complex of machine learning issues. Uh, the fact that um, you don't really know um, uh, all the all the uh, um, details uh, of uh, the outcome of the computation of a machine learning uh, system because you don't train it, you don't uh, don't implement all those alternatives. Uh, so uh, it's only, you know, up to a certain um, 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 uh, statistical uh, or stochastical um, 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 position that you can predict the outcome of machine learning uh, systems, in particular neural networks, are, you know, prime example of a system that you don't, don't really understand, right? <laughs> okay. Um, right, so um, we have uh, already said um, the risk management specification is based on a generic document on risk management with the 31,000 in the 2018 version. That's a document that's, you know, as well established uh, in the organization. Almost every organization implements it. Uh, it's not certifiable. It's a requirement standard only, but, you know, most most larger organizations, Microsoft and um, um take some inspiration uh, and uh, uh, some 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 guidance out of this document. So uh, it's not it's not a bad starting point. And um, there's um, there's uh, 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 directives that we have to use this document for. Uh, uh, risk management, if we would like to do something on, uh, uh, you know, technology or application uh, uh, um, uh, dependent risk management in ISO. Um, the approach of 31,000 comprises, you know, principles to follow, it comprises the management framework and it uh, uh, um, comprises processes. And I will focus on those today, but you know, uh, do a, do a few things on the other two aspects as well. So 31, uh, um, um, 33894 decides to follow the approach uh, uh, of 31,000 in the sense that it adopts the document entirely. So um, every guidance in 31,000 is automatically guidance in 23894, but it adds AI specific considerations. Um, that's the scope of the document. Uh, uh, this document provides guidance on how to organize, uh, to, on how organizations that develop, produce, deploy, and uh, use products, systems, and services that utilize artificial intelligence can manage risk, uh, risk specifically to, uh, related to uh, AI. Uh, the guidance also aims on assisting organizations to integrate risk management in their AI-related activities and functions. Moreover, it describes processes for the effective implementation and integration of AI risk management. Uh, the editor of this document, that's me. So it's something I really know a lot about and it's really important to me. Uh, being the editor of an ISO document means you have at least a three years commitment to spend a considerable a uh, 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 portion of your lifetime to this document. So usually um, um, editors feel very deeply for, for the documents they're doing. So it's, 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 it's the case here. Uh, it should be noted, uh, artificial intelligence risk management 31, uh, uh, 33894. That's not a requirement standards. You cannot certify, certify against it. There's no way to do that. It's guidance only. It's intended to be guidance only uh, because we have other documents like 42001 that actually contains requirements on risk management. They are very high level. Don't go into details because um, how to do risk management should be up to the organization. Uh, if they can prove that they do effective risk management, risk management, it should be enough for certification. This document tells, 
document it tells organizations how to do it in an effective way. And uh, the um, uh, idea is that once you follow uh, 23894 in detail, that this will provide you with enough, uh, that this allows you to provide enough evidence uh, for the risk management parts of 30 of 40, 2001. So both documents are designed to work in unison. So in order to uh, uh, get um, um, uh, an AIMS certification, it would be recommendable to organizations use uh, 23894 for their risk management. It should be, you know, should be um, the document to go. But if your organizations don't want to do this, if they believe uh, 23894 is not appropriate, or, you know, they have something better in place, then they also should be able to do this. It's not a mandatory thing. Um, it addresses in general risk related to an organization, but I already said before, this includes consideration of impacts to individuals, society, and the environment. Uh, this is considered as part of the organizational risk management. And uh, just to add on this, um, in the uh, uh, draft EU regulation, we find a lot of those uh, external risks already addressed. So, um, if uh, um, an organization, a company in Europe would like to conform to the AI Act, then those aspects impact to individuals, impact to societies, automatically become organiza uh, organizational objectives, organizational things to be considered. Because you know there's a law saying you have to do this, right? So and if you don't follow the law, then you have to uh, uh, pay 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 probably you have to fee. So uh, the circle closes here. Once we have regulation in place asking for those aspects, they automatically become um, 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 business objectives, um, um, organizational objectives. So um, uh, 23894 applies in full. Principles of risk management. I said before, there are three parts, principles, framework, and processes. The principles of uh, 31,000 are Risk management has to be integrated and other management activities. It has to be structured and comprehensive. It needs to be customized to the concrete needs of the organization. It needs to be inclusive. So all stakeholders, all interested parties have to be involved uh, as, you know, as, as appropriate. It has to be dynamic. It has to you know, adapt to new circumstances, to new uh, things coming up, to new, you know, uh, external, internally. It has to provide and use best available information about you know, what's going on in the organization. It has to take into account human and cultural factors. And it has to uh, perform continued improvement of the, uh, of the uh, approach and the, the processes. Of course, you know, um, uh, nothing stays as it is and everything can be improved uh, at some point in time. Um, <coughs> Uh, 23894 adds some air specific interpretation, um, emphasizing the extended need to understand uh, stakeholder needs and expect expectation in the context of artificial intelligence, which is a technology, you know, or, you know, set of technologies that cause a lot of discussion, a lot of doubts, a lot of, you know, fears uh, uh, right now. And these have to be addressed, of course. It has to take into account the nature of AI systems. They are, you know, at least machine learning uh, 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 AI systems, you know, they're based on, they just provide, you know, uh, results that are statistically uh, um, uh, correct. Um, they, uh, uh, but on the other hand, they are able, you know, to, to identify patterns in, in data uh, much more, you know, which much, much better accuracy and much faster than human can, can, can do that and so on. And this has to be, of course, taken into account. Uh, it uh, addresses implication to the organization itself. So if an organization uses an AI system, for instance, there's a risk that the organization uses competence because you know, the AI system knows all about it. So why should employees know about it, right? Uh, and considerations of societal concerns. Uh, the framework, um, uh, contains of uh, a recommendation with regard to leadership commitments, to the integration, to the design of the uh, um, of the risk management system. 
implementation of risk management evaluation and improvement. And uh, uh, 23894, it's, uh, I have specific interpretations here, in particular on the, uh, on the communication of the responsible use and uh, development of AI system. You see, uh, most of the things uh, addressed here are also addressed in AIMS, which I talked about in the previous presentation. So these documents are really designed to work uh, uh, in connection. Uh, another aspect is to understand the context of the organization uh, in terms of uh, societal, cultural, political, legal, regulatory, financial, technology, technology, uh, technological, economic, and environmental factors. Uh, you have to understand key drivers and trends, a lot of them in artificial intelligence right now, stakeholder relationship, perception, values, needs, and expectations, also something super important when uh, uh, artificial intelligence is discussed. Contractual relationship commitments, of course. Uh, complexity of networks and dependencies. Um, um, particularly you know, when it comes to uh, supply chain, which you know, right now are more uh, uh, supply networks. It's not really clear up, upstream, downstream here, right? Right now it's really, you know, um, um, uh, all interleaved and all dissected. And internal factors, you know, like the cultures and values of your organization, the structures of your organization, the capabilities uh, uh, that the organization has, data that are available and so on. Of course, it needs to define roles and responsibilities, allocate resources, and just uh, and, and to take into account need of uh, information needed for continual improvement. Um, if we, when we talk about the process, the first basic process is about you know defining scope, context, and risk criteria. Um, uh, uh, for risk management, um, the scope. Uh, con comprises consideration on objectives, expected outcomes, time, location, specific inclu uh, inclusions and exclusions, tools and techniques uh, to be used, resources and responsibilities, and relationship with other projects, project projects and processes and activities in your organization. Um, the context uh, to be taken into account, societal, legal, uh, contextual environment of the organizations and, you know, stakeholders that uh, uh, needs to be taken into account, the needs and expectation, and risk criteria, the nature and type of uh, uncertainties that can affect outcomes and objectives, both tangible, you know, uh, things that uh, affect money, uh, resources, uh, equipment, but also intangible ones, you know, um, um, infringement of human rights and stuff like this. Um, Consequences, likelihood, uh, uh, how this is uh, uh, measured and identified, you know, how to describe the uh, impact of a certain uh, event that can cause a certain risk, time related factors, um, uh, consistency in the use of, of, of measurements, um, risk levels. Uh, uh, um, this document, 23894, does not give you a, a definition of risk levels, like we saw in the presentation of Konstantinos, uh, the AI Act has such um, uh, classification of risk levels. Uh, we deliberately didn't do this, because uh, we know that is, this is well, part of the EU regulation and doing something here that contradicts the EU re regulation would not be a good idea. And we expect you know, similar documents you know, I mean, uh, if, you, if Europe does uh, a regulatory framework, usually the world follows. GDPR was the best example for this. Uh, we are expecting, you know, uh, that similar regulations will pop up everywhere around the world. So um, there will be no uh, uh, identification of risk levels here. This is up to the organization. This is up to the legal context of the organization. This is up to what the organization itself believes is, uh, uh, is, is appropriate for them. Well, um, combinations and sequences of multiple events uh, and risks that needs to be taken into account. And of course, you know, the organization capability to address those risks. Risk assessment, you know, identif identifying risks, analyzing risk and evaluate risks, you know, to uh, uh, 
assign a priority and an importance fact, uh, factor to them. That's the uh, second main process here. Risk identification uh, is about you know uh, uh, assets and their values um, to the organization, to uh, individuals, and to the society. Identification of risk sources. What are the events that could lead to a certain uh, risk? Um, what are the outcomes of uh, 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 those events? Um, how you manage those things on a technical level? What are the controls here? And uh, the identification of consequences. Um, 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 what would be you know, the impact of uh, such risks to you know, um, the organization uh, itself or you know, uh, uh, actors outside the uh, organization? Then uh, risk analysis, um, criticality, um, uh, you know, identification of tangible and tangible impacts and criteria used uh, uh, to, um, to establish the overall impact. And then the assessment of likelihood. I mean, if uh, risk is very unlikely to take into account, you probably will not make it a central part of your risk management. On the contrary, if something uh, uh, has very low impact, but it's very likely to, uh, to, to occur. So for instance, your uh, movie recommendation system recommends a wrong movie. Well, this happens all the time, but you know, the impact is very low. You would probably also not take this into account. This is only about you know, things that have high impact and are, that are not unlikely to occur. Right, and then there's risk evaluation. Understand all this. What is what is the impact? How important it is to take into certain risk into account. What are the priority and focus here? That's part of the risk evaluation. Um, then treatment options. Uh, uh, two three eight nine four did not do any uh, uh, AI specific um, interpretation of those risk treatment options. These are basically taken from 31,000, because they are really application and organizational specifics. So there was not really uh, something meaningful to be added that needs to be taken into account, particularly for uh, artificial intelligence. But the um, uh, treatment options are to avoid the risk by not deciding to start anything. Um, uh, uh, taking, you know, uh, um, uh, taking or increase the risk in order to pursue an opportunity. That happens all the time in business. You see something, uh, it might be risky, but you know, uh, there's a lot of money to, 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 to be made. So you probably just accept the risk, right? Um, removal of the risk source is of course something you can do. Changing the likelihood is something uh, you can also uh, try to do. Uh, change changing of the consequences of uh, certain uh, things that can, can happen. And sharing the responses, you can uh, uh, have an insurance against you know, certain outcomes. Um, and you, know, you can retain the risk by uh, informed decision. So not all of these risk treatment options are obviously options if you have a law in place saying, okay, you have to avoid physical harm, right? So then you cannot take, uh, 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 you cannot accept the risk or, you know, you probably, you probably can share the risk of course, but you know, on a different level then. So uh, this is really more general than uh, the, uh, the treatments of risk that are for instance addressed in the draft AI Act. Right, so there are a few additional steps, uh, communication and consultation, involvement of stakeholders, communication of policies and commitments, monitoring and review. Uh, you have to understand how effective your risk management process is and you have to improve it. And recording and reporting uh, describes a little bit about information uh, that's to be recorded and uh, reporting requirements. Okay, so this is my Tour de France through um, um, 23894, the risk management specification. And um, as I said, we hope we will be able to uh, um, publish the document in the, in the, um, just excuse me. I'm sorry, there was some, some, some disruption here on my side. That's, that's in this advantage if you work from home. Um, 
So we hope to be able to publish this document uh, in midst or, you know, uh, uh, the second half of 2030, uh, 20, 20, 22, uh, 23, sorry. Okay, thank you. Are there questions for clarification at this point? I think, you know, we do the general discussion at the end. Uh, Peter, it's uh, Joseph Karis from uh, Cyprus Standards. Yeah. Um, is there um, uh, interesting uh, for the certification of uh, of the management system of AI? I mean, um, globally, is there interest that is there uh, an early interesting in in uh, from uh, companies or organizations from uh, certifying with uh, with the management system? Yes, yes, yes. Um, we are pretty confident that my, my company will uh, certify against it. We already hear rumors that uh, uh, other companies um, are also looking. I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, uh, providing you with those names of those companies right now. But you know, it's the big ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, make, make your own list, right? So uh, they're probably uh, uh, it's probably the right list. Um, yes, it is. Um, we also, you know, have a lot of interest from uh, companies contributing to this project. For instance, I mean, Siemens in Germany is super active here. So I cannot uh, imagine that they will ignore the document when it gets published, right? So um, and the same goes for a lot of other companies uh, uh, that are doing um, artificial intelligence on a larger scale. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you. So any other question? You may, yes. Yes, Olga, please. Thank you very much for uh, another wonderful presentation. I have a, a question for more for long-term planning. So you mentioned that uh, the guidelines for uh, establishing the management, the risk management systems for organizations who wish to do so or have to do so will be uh, written in its final draft in 2023. When do you think will it become uh, a mandatory requirement? It won't be a mandatory requirement at all. Okay. So it's it will really, remain voluntary. It's really recommendation. So this is because I explained this before that um, it should be up to the organization on how they would like to do their risk management. As long as they fulfill uh, uh, requirements, for instance, as stated in 2001, they should be free to set up their own processes, their own uh, responsibilities. As long as it's effective and addresses all you know, the, 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 um, the necessary requirements, it should be up to them. It's, uh, uh, um, um, how well, how a company does their business, that's their part, right? This document intends to provide them with, you know, guidance on how to do this, uh, giving them, you know, uh, some, some ideas, you know, uh, providing them with um, a lot of information, what to consider, pro proposing to them structures and processes to set up. It's, it's, it's not intended to be mandatory. Um, but, you know, uh, the uh, EU AI Act has requirements on risk management, and uh, it is our hope that this document will be uh, sufficient to address those, uh, uh, those um, 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 requirements. But also, I mean, the AI Act doesn't say, okay, you have to, you have to do a risk assessment, you have to do uh, this or this or that, right? It just says, do risk management. Uh, but it does not uh, uh, tell organizations how to do it, right? Um, well, there's a little bit of a question on how far uh, uh, JTC 21 should go with their interpretation of uh, mandatory aspect of risk management, right? Uh, so in principle, they could use this document or another document on risk management, uh, uh, making all the recommendations to hard requirements you can certify against. It's not clear that this is the right way to do because um, it would uh, require a lot of organizations to, um, to uh, uh, 
to revise the internal structures uh, uh, in order to conform to the AI Act, which is something that you know will cost uh, billions to the uh, uh, European uh, industry and uh, economy. Indeed. Indeed. So, uh, that's probably not the best idea you can have. It would be much better to uh, uh, state requirements that uh, organizations have to follow with regard to risk management, but leave it open to them how to address these requirements by the implementation of appropriate risk management uh, processes and, and so on. And this document can help you. Thank you very much. So there is, so to speak, there is no risk of AI industry becoming a fully regulated industry at this moment. Uh, sorry, I didn't, didn't get this. There's no risk? No risk of AI industry becoming fully regulated industry in a way, uh, oh, say, well, pharma yeah. or medical device industry is fully regulated. Well, you can imagine that this is a fear of a lot of uh, uh, industries in, 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 in Europe right now. Not only, you know, the the the, the big multinational multinationals, right? It's something I'm hearing from from German companies all the time. Um, uh, will there be a total regulation? How many how many documents do we have to take into account? How much will that cost? Will that you know push business? Yes, um, this is really concern right now. And uh, saying there's no danger, that's probably wrong, but um, you know. <laughs> In the standardization world, we are working against that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you very much for, uh, for for your answer. And again, thank you very much for very, very detailed and comprehensive presentations. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, more questions? Otherwise, I will go to the last part and then we will enter a uh, session on uh, you know general discussion. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the last part will be a little bit shorter because you know the project of, uh, uh, for the 2005 AI system impact assessment. Uh, that's a project that just has started. Um, it already perceives a lot of interest. Uh, we just had the uh, second session for that project, you know, and. We are right now in the process to compile material. I already had 60 comments uh, from various uh, experts. And um, from one day to the other, I went from uh, outline document to something that had uh, you know, text for almost every clause and every section. So if this continue, uh, continues this way, we can probably um, 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 provide the draft to uh, participating uh, national bodies in SC42 within, I don't know, a few months, which would be super fast. Um, so uh, I will provide you with a little bit of motivation why this is an important project. Um, we'll talk about the project as such and we'll give you an overview about, sorry, about the main contents. So um, in, fact, in fact, you know, um, there's a gap between for 2001, the AI management system standard and the risk management document uh, I just you know, uh, explained to you, 23894. And uh, this risk is that uh, risk management document contains rec uh, recommendations that take into account uh, factors such as privacy, security, safety, fairness, transparency, while managing organizational risks. Um, and those factors are related to external stakeholders, namely individuals and uh, society at large, right? Um, on the other hand, for 2001, the AI uh, management system um, requires the organization to perform an AI system impact assessment. We discussed the requirement on this, um, considering impacts to no, no, the four, four aspects here, legal positions or life opportunity of individuals, physical or physical, uh, physical or psychological well-beings of individuals, impacts to human rights. Uh, okay, society is not on the slide because it's a little bit older and the society aspect was added recently and I forgot to add it here. Um, and it contains, contains several guidelines on what to consider, but you know, it doesn't provide you with uh, good information on how to do it. And this is where uh, for 2005 kicks, it should you really explain how to perform your AI system impact assessment. Um, 
So the objectives for the project are, you know, to provide organizations guidance uh, um, 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 when it, when we know achieving the requirements on uh, stated in aims, and um, uh, uh, and you know, also to explain how to do this impact assessment in the context of uh, your risk management processes. I should mention another project, which is right now also published all the slides. Sorry, it's not FTS, it's, it's, pub it's published already, uh, uh, 23507, Governance Implication of the Use of Artificial Intelligence by Organizations. It's one of the uh, uh, documents published uh, from, from uh, uh, 42. Right, so um, then we have uh, the uh, scope here of the project um, um, documents provide guidance for organizations perform an AI system impact assessment for individuals and societies that can be affected by an AI system and its foreseeable application. So the document tries not to identify all the impact as unlikely and unthinkable they are. This is really about, you know, what is in range and under the control of the organization who would like to apply it. This does not, you know, tries to, um, tries to ask organization to do something this is impossible. If something is out of control or it's not foreseeable, then uh, well, it, it would be very unreasonable to ask organization to, to, um, to take it into account, right? The other thing uh, that's important here, it does not take into account impacts to, you know, everyone, to, to everyone. It does not take into account impacts to, uh, to suppliers or, you know, to, to uh, customers, as long as they are not uh, individuals, right, end users. Um, uh, cause, you know, this is in scope of uh, risk management. This is not in scope of the specific uh, AI system impact assessment that is, you know, described here. This is to be taken into account. I got a lot of uh, contributions and comments saying, okay, yeah, but you have to take into account also impacts to uh, your business partners. The answer is no. Uh, uh, you have to do, the, there's another document uh, uh, capturing this. This is not part of this document. So keep it, keep it, keep it small and nice was one of the, the objectives here and keep it uh, uh, focused on specific uh, problems and aspects. Uh, that seemed to be very important when uh, uh, well, we in Germany proposed the project. And um, uh, it should not be you know, an alternative risk management document, but really integrate into uh, uh, what we have done there. So um, uh, then you know, uh, the document really talks about you know, how to integrate um, um, the impact assessment process into risk management and the AI management uh, system, like you know, explained in the previous slide. Uh, right, so um, I'm the editor of this document. It's my next big challenge uh, after, you know, getting, um, getting um, um, 23894 risk management almost finalized. Again, this is guidance only. There are no requirements in the document. It's not a basis for certification. Intentionally, of course, you know, how to do those things should be up to the organizations. As long as they do it, and can uh, explain that they are do it in an effective and uh, uh, an effective way, then they could use in principle any approach that they would like. This is just you know uh, one potential approach that they can apply, um, and I hope it's that it will be applied oftenly, but it's not mandatory in any in any in any way. Right. So main contents: um, the document contains. Um, two main parts and a few parts that are, you know, um, um, well, also there, let's put it that way. Uh, the first one is about implementing an NI system impact assessment process. Uh, the first one, there should be documentation of the process and the, 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 there's a lot of information on how this, uh, uh, how this documentation should be done in, uh, in other parts of the document. Timing of the AI impact assessment, do you do it regularly? Do you do it uh, uh, when certain certain e events happen? Do you do it, um, 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 you know, when 
when, when you certify get aims for instance that's 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 the next uh, consideration here uh, guidance on determining uh, the scope of impact assessment uh, uh, the domain of intended use of an artificial intelligence systems and so on allocating responsibility uh, integration into the ai uh, system lifecycle that's a little bit under dispute might vanish because you know it's already uh, captured in the timing but you know this project is really at the beginning and uh, the contents that are presenting uh, to you today, this is likely to, to get changed in the future. Establishing thresholds, you know, uh, uh, what is the sensitive use and what are the criteria for a sensitive use of an artificial intelligence system? That's a use that might involve uh, something that's not intended. Uh, so somebody can come to harm by uh, that use. Um, um, some life opportunity is denied, things like this. And what are prohibited uses? Uses that are not allowed for some reasons uh, at all. You know, for instance, the um, AI Act um, um, uh, uh, prohibits uh, use of AI systems for you know um, um, uh, influencing people to do uh, certain things and not to do certain things, you know, what's called nudging these days. Um, that would be a prohibited use in Europe. But, you know, it's probably not uh, prohibited in other parts of the world. So um, this is why this is only, uh, uh, again, a, re a recommendation, not a requirement. It becomes a requirement in Europe, right? Um, how to perform the impact assessment, how to analyze the results, how recording reporting is obviously uh, uh, important. Approval processes, what kind of processes you need to be in place in the organization to say, okay, well, we have a system, uh, we have a project coming up, here's the impact assessment. Um, how do, uh, what, what processes we need to approve that, uh, that, uh, pro, uh, that, that um, um, project in the light of the impact assessment has been done. And monitoring review, of course. Uh, the second part of the document uh, addresses the documentation because, you know, uh, doing something is very good, but, you know, you have to communicate it, right? You have to provide comprehensive documentation on this. And this um, 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 relates to the scope uh, of the impact assessment, um, system information, description of the system, uh, description of the features of the system, uh, its uh, purpose and intended use, uh, information about the algorithms that have been used, on the data, on the deployment environment, on the geographic area or languages that you know um, um, that needs to be taken into account. The system um, um, used in Europe, in Germany, um, might have might have you know implemented differently than one that's used in Asia. So all this stuff, this cultural uh, uh, things to be considered. What are the stakeholders? <coughs> What are the potential impacts? What are the benefits of using the systems? This is also part of the impact assessment, right? And what are the harms? And what are the system failures that, uh, and cases of misuse that are foreseeable and uh, need to be taken into account? Um, then there's a, a clause intended where we don't have contents yet. So if somebody wants to contribute there, it would be really appreciated about measures to address harms and benefits. This is not intended to provide a complete uh, guidance on risk treatment, but should concentrate on technical measures um, from a, a development or operational perspectives. So what actually can be done on technical level uh, to mitigate a certain uh, impact. And this is then, of course, something that needs to be taken into account into uh, 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 the risk management process. But for instance, if uh, uh, if a development team uh, uh, proposes a certain project and does an impact assessment for this project, then it's usually not up to the uh, team to say, okay, no, we cannot do it because, you know, the risks are so high. This is part of the risk management. So this um, really also addresses the integration of the impact assessment into the risk management. And there are some annexes uh, uh, planned, also no contents yet, but I'm hopeful that I will get some um, uh, guidance for the use with, uh, uh, for the 2001, the AI uh, management um, um, system standard and guidance for, uh, for the use with 23894 on 
risk management. Right, so as I said, it's a project pretty much at the beginning. It made a big, make, made big progress in the last week, actually. <clears throat> and I hope it will continue that way. So it will be, <laughs> will be a very a project that is you know, uh, done in a timely manner. And I'm really pleased about the, um, um, the um, attention it already you know, perceives uh, by various experts in, in this case, working with one. Uh, of SC42. Okay, thank you very much. I think this concludes my big part on uh, this event, um, but we have a question and answer section and a discussion section later on, and I will do my best to answer all the questions. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Peter, for your presentation. So at this point, we'll uh, proceed with uh, uh, question and answer uh, session. So again, uh, you can write any question you may have in the Q&A session, um, or you can uh, raise your hand as we hit uh, for your questions. Uh, just to inform you on uh, uh, the chat box, there is a link where uh, it's a questionnaire regarding uh, the, uh, this online event and you can take two minutes to, to give us your feedback. So yes, please for your questions. Yes, yes, Ms. Olga, please. Thank you, last question from me, I promise. Oh, uh, well, please, please ask more questions. <laughs> yeah, <I got it. laughs> This time, the question about AI system of pack assessment, as we are a research organization with every research group working either on AI or machine learning right. in one aspect or the other. It's important for us to understand at which point of the development we should do AI system impact assessment going forward. If you could give us any indications, I understand it's a very early stage, but an indication will be helpful for us to determine our internal processes. Right, so first, it's, it's up to you how to do it, right? So um, um, it should be, you know, it's also something that the organization has to decide by themselves. But, you know, as a general rule, as early as possible, of course, if you have uh, um, um, an idea for a new project, um, I mean, a project that's not just a research project because, you know, uh, 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 but project that really uh, leads to, um, a product or service that goes to market, right? Then yes, it really, yes, has, yes. really has an impact, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> um, the uh, the earlier you start, you start with that, the better, right? So, um, 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 if you have uh, your your idea, if you're designing the system, you already want to to uh, uh, to um, involve, you know, all the uh, stakeholders that are you know relevant for your project and uh, try to understand what would be the potential impacts, right? I mean, the worst thing that you can do is to start uh, 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 right before the, uh, deploy the, the deployment uh, of, the, of the system in the uh, production environment, right? Because, you know, then you might notice that it involves risks that you are not willing to take, impacts that are not acceptable for you. And then it gets very expensive to stop the project. So as early, uh, to the earlier you start, the better. And the earlier you start, the, the better is your chance to take uh, all the uh, results of the impact assessments into account uh, in later phases of the development. Uh, that's the that's rule, I think. It's a general rule, but you know, it depends a little bit on, on, on your project, on your system, on your organization. When you can do this, it's also a question of resources, of course, right? So, um, um, but uh, uh, well, that, that's probably all I can say. It's not as early as possible for you, as it is for you. Thank you, thank you. So to share thinking, uh, we try to do it at the proof of concept stage, yes. because at the initiation stage, on the conceptualization stage, it is still unclear how the technology will be used and where its market and its implementation and it's going to be. So which target groups or audiences it will affect. 
it becomes much, much, much clearer at, after they can see successful proof of concept or during the proof of concept, usually. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so yes. You, already, not, you already gave the, the, the right answer to the question when to do it, when it is appropriate, right? So when it is uh, best place in the development uh, cycle for, 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 the, for the product or service, right? <laughs> and it's, it's for you, uh, proof of concept phase, if you have something like this, then, you know, it's, 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 it's totally legally acceptable to do this. Well, thank you very much. We'll be looking forward to, to see what, what you and uh, the other editors of this document will yeah, yeah, come join, up with. Yeah. Join, join, join Work Group 1 and I will be, you know, very pleased to get your, your contributions and your discuss with you further. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ms. Olga. So any other question? Uh, yes. So, yes. Oh. so hi everyone. Thank you, Mr. Dusen, for your presentations. Really insightful to say. Um, I'm a research associate at uh, at Science Center of Excellence in Cyprus, and I'm also a PhD candidate uh, at the topic of uh, human agency and oversight in algorithmic processes. And um, I have a question regarding that, actually. Um, there's uh, research has shown, actually, that uh, AI systems uh, can often perpetuate uh, bias and discrimination, uh, societal bias, uh, to be more exact, and affect protected groups of people. Um, yes. The European Commission, uh, in their guidelines for trustworthy uh, AI, refers to human agency and oversight, actually, as one of the important aspects uh, of this uh, whole uh, monitoring, let's say, process. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, you also mentioned during your presentation, uh, if I remember correctly, that uh, in case of this oversight of AI systems, uh, you don't have um, uh, many use cases yet, and it's in the preparation phase, right? That's yes, correct. It's a preparation phase. It's what's called PWI, preliminary work item, going on in SC42 in working group three on trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the, the PWI has been initiated by Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and it is expected that it will, uh, uh, you know, um, um, result in a standardization project probably in uh, spring uh, 2023. So, um, but uh, there's nothing, uh, uh, um, there's, you know, no technical specification going on right now. That is, you know, on, 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 on in a phase where we could say, okay, uh, we can expect the standard at this point. Um, but then again, the PWI, the group, uh, uh, of people working on this, they obviously can 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 use any help. And uh, uh, um, if you would like to contribute there, you are of course invited to um, well, to contribute and working with three on 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 this project. Um, but uh, you're right. I mean, um, the question was discussed a long time in SC42, but nobody really was felt you know able to make a proposal. Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, well. I mean, we, we can only uh, do things that are, you know, proposed by uh, uh, by a certain national body where, you know, we have an editor in place, you know, where we have uh, experts available who are willing to do, to, to work on, on a certain topic. If we don't have this, then we can start, can't start a project. There's another thing that um, might be also of relevance here. There is a project on controllability ongoing. Uh, and this is, in fact, I think it's a technical specification, if I'm not right, which is, um, you know, some kind of international standard. It's not really that different, um, which is under Korean leadership, I think. Or is it, or is it China? no Chinese Chinese leadership? I think. Um, and uh, this is also going on in uh, working group three, uh, but this project concentrates more on technical. Things. So, what can you do to uh, understand what a system does, and you know what kind of um, control mechanisms you need to to influence this? It's not quite uh, the same thing than the human oversight 
uh, 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 that the European Commission uh, once, you know, also has, has, has addressed in the uh, draft AI Act, right? Um, which is more, you know, on a more general, more, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, sorry, on a more general level, mm -hmm. but, you know, it can contribute to the whole thing as well. This project is uh, right now still in an early phase. It's a working draft phase, so experts contribute to it. It's not it has not been brought to the attention of a review, you know, of rational bodies for for, for a review. Uh, but it can be expected that this, this will happen, you know, pretty soon within the next six months. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Thank you so much for your clarifications. Yes, uh, Mr. Joseph Caris wants to uh, just to remind please. just to remind to the participants that uh, anyone that is interesting to join in uh, the ISO uh, committee uh, and to its working groups for contributing into the standardization uh, must contact uh, Cyprus Standards Organization. So. We will uh, guide you uh, with all the processes uh, needed. Thank you. Exactly. Yes. So, any other question from our audience? Okay, it seems we don't have any other question. So this is where we have to conclude uh, this informative uh, seminar. And uh, thank you all for your participation uh, today. Um, I would like also to inform you uh, for the next informative seminar of CYS that will take place on a physical presence with the topic cybersecurity of standard ISO IC 27001 uh, for the changes compared to the previous version uh, of standard. And this will be on 13 of December. So invitations will be sent uh, to you electronically. So thank you again for your participation and uh, have uh, have a nice day so thank you thank you thank you okay. thank you all. thank you very much bye bye, bye. bye. thank you very much bye bye